This video is brought to you by Black Moon Games. Check out their products at shop-black-moon.com. I love Star Wars. I My parents took me to see Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi when I was a child, and that just pretty much was the foundation of my lifelong love of science fiction. Uh, of course, nowadays, we have so much Star Wars content. We've got The Mandalorian. We've got all these other series that are coming out. And of course, we have the, the sequel trilogy. But it's And it's hard to remember that there was a time when there wasn't any Star Wars to consume. And this was what we had to create our own Star Wars content. Star Wars, the, the role-playing game from West End Games. This book became so... I don't know, it became such the lifeblood of Star Wars back in the late 80s that it was actually given to the Star Wars art uh, authors uh, that were writing the books as reference material. And so I thought today, let's bring everyone together and do an actual play of the West End Star Wars games. We're going to be playing an adventure called Tatooine Manhunt. Uh, before we begin, I want to ask folks that uh, if you enjoy, if you are a fan of Star Wars, make sure to hit that like button down below, and uh, make sure to share this with with other folks that uh, you know that also love Star Wars and like actual plays and RPG. We do all sorts of uh, RPG content here on the show. Um, and if you are coming across our content for the first time and you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification that'll let you know every single time we go live or upload new content. Every bit helps, and we really greatly appreciate that. All right, without further ado, let's bring on our cast for this show. Everyone, welcome to Tatooine Manhunt, episode one. Uh, we're just going to go around. I'm going to introduce everyone. Uh, you can tell us a little bit about your characters, and then we'll dive right in. Uh, let's start uh, Let's start over here. Brandon, thanks so much for, for coming on again. You were part of the actual play that we did for, uh, for Cortex with the Transformers. Uh, you... Want to tell folks? Uh, I am playing Salarant Mon Covid. He is a Mon Calamari pilot. He is touted as uh, the Rebellion's best pilot in the far outer rim. Uh, he was in the uh, Death Star attack. Nice. So uh, he was a he was a glorious pilot there. But uh, recently, he's seen so many of the things that the Rebellion has done. He knows that. The Empire is bad, but he's no longer quite sure that the Rebels are the good guys. Okay. I like that. Sure. Sure. Uh, let's go right down to uh, underneath. Brandon is uh, Ben, uh, also known as Higgins802 on Twitch uh, and uh, on, also on the Chaotic Goodcast. Ben, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the character that you'll be playing tonight? Sure. I am playing uh, Rakan Graf. He is a retired uh, Imperial captain. Uh, who left service in the Imperial Navy many, many years ago, prior to the uh, the, the rumors starting about a uh, dark, imposing figure with a sort of red light that uh, was causing havoc and destruction uh, for the rebellion, uh, kind of became disenfranchised uh, with a lot of the direction that the Empire was taking. Uh, in his early career, he was a former scout trooper. Uh, he was a sharpshooter, very well decorated, uh, but an injury on a patrol uh, left him unable to fulfill those duties, and he transferred to the Imperial Navy uh, when he made his way up through the ranks. Uh, now no longer uh, enlisted, uh, he has found a, a new home within the Rebellion. Nice. Love it. Love it. Uh, and next to uh, Ben is uh, the one and only Amanda Call from author, illustrator of uh, Age of Night, the popular webcomic. Amanda, who are you playing tonight? Hey, I am playing uh, Berka Hanoff, and she is a Bothan medic, uh, part of the Rebellion. Uh, my thing is, I, I want to help people, and uh, even if sometimes the Rebels are uh, maybe making more messes than they're fixing, at least they're not actively trying to hurt people like the Empire is, so here I am. All right, excellent. Last but not least, Jason Hunt, part of the Chaotic Good Cash. You see him on this show quite a bit. Jason, thanks for coming on, doing this. No worries. I'll be playing Cresden Boers. He's uh, formerly the head man of the Boers uh, crime syndicate family. Uh, they were pushed out of power by the Huts when they moved into uh, the uh, system surrounding Tatooine. 
Um, he's kept the name just because it's the only thing he's ever known. He grew up in the household. Um, he's joined the rebellion because he just doesn't know what he wants to do with himself anymore. Uh, the rebellion was in fair force on Tatooine when he was there at one point. So he joined up with them and now he's basically a hanger on. All right. All right. Very good. All right. It wouldn't be Star Wars without an opening crawl. So here we go. Let's hit the crawl for Star Wars Tatooine Manhunt Episode 1. As the crawl pans down, uh, it shows the, an Imperial Star Destroyer uh, re relentless docking with the Quen, the Quen space station. Uh, the next scene you see is the interior of the uh, Imperial Star Destroyer relentless, the audience chamber, and twin blast doors op slide open, revealing the dark interior of a massive chamber. An Imperial captain stands upon a high platform flanked by lower officers. Two stormtroopers march in. They drop a, a manacle at the feet of Captain Parlin, the commander of the warship. The charge, demands the Parlin. Piracy, sir, snaps a trooper. Kill the scum, Sna Parlin replies sharply. Wait, screams the prisoner. I have something to bargain with. Information important to the Emperor. In exchange for my life. Parlin's dead eyes... Uh, gleam triumphantly. Go ahead. I'm all ears. Talon. It con concerns Adar Talon. Parlin listens intently to the pirate's tale, then issues orders. Quietly, Ensign Dana pockets a data storage pad and slips away. The commander issues one final order. Lieutenant Vor, send for the bounty hunters. And that fades to the interior of Quinn Space Station. Are you sure this is where we're supposed to meet this Dana person? Sure, I'm sure. This is the place in her message, Quinn Space Station. Yep, good old Quinn. The final fuel and supply before the Outer Rim Territories. Why would Dana choose such a desolate place for a pickup? <laughs> Probably because her last mission was an undercover assignment aboard the Star Destroyer Relentless. You mean she was on that Imperial monstrosity perked outside? <laughs> Not only on it, but she served as an officer these past few months, gathering all kinds of information on us, on the Alliance. But still, her mission had another few weeks to go. I wonder why she decided to jump ship early. Well, her message sounded urgent. Code green, agent in trouble, pick up immediately. And she mentioned the name Adar Talon. Everyone got excited about that. Clue me in. Who is this Adar Talon person? What planet are you from again? Commander Adar Talon was a hero before the Empire, uh, in the days of the Old Republic, even before me. Uh, she, she was a brilliant tactician, a, a naval officer. His face fighting strategies and maneuvers were light years ahead of their time and still used by us and the Imperials. You mean the guys whose statue was torn down by the Emperor a while back? That ain't our talent? I thought he was dead. 
He is... Commander Talon died fighting pirates in the Dal Dalcon sector. His ship was obliterated. No wreckage, no survivors, and nothing. Heck, there wasn't even enough left to give him a decent burial. Don't be gross. Let's just get to the rendezvous point, find Dana, and get back to our ship. I'll feel a whole lot better with some distance between us and the Star Destroyer out there. Well, she should be around the next bend. <laughs> there she is. Wasn't she supposed to be alone? You know, I've got a bad feeling about this. There near a rapidly closing airlock, you see Agent Dana lying at the feet of an Imperial officer. You recognize her from the hollow file in your ship's computer. Next to the Imperial are two rough and dangerous looking customers. A short, wily female in padded armor and a tall, scaly humanoid armed with a blaster rifle. Blaster rifle. Behind them, beyond the airlock, stands a figure dressed in deadly... Mandalorian armor. He glares at you, and then the door slams shut. The Imperial uh, officer says, Hey, you right there. Stop. Go go detain those, those people. And as uh, you come around the corner, you're confronted as uh, two bounty hunters start uh, rushing your way. And, uh, Let's uh, let's all roll for perception. <laughs> <laughs> right into it then. Okay. I have an eleven, Doug. All right. Uh, I got an eight. Oh wait, no, sorry, nine. Okay. Um, Thirteen. Um. Mm-hmm. First roll of the evening, and my dice did the thing. So I have an 18. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I won't roll that well ever again. That will, that yeah, that will never happen again. <laughs> it's the outside the space station. <laughs> okay, so Amanda, you're going to go first. Um, we can kind of... Do you all want to uh, say what you want to do? And then... or Yeah, why don't you, why don't you give... Uh, Amanda, why don't you tell me what you want to do? Uh, uh, You've got two <coughs> bounty hunters coming right towards you. They look like they know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, is there anywhere I can run to? Um, pretty much it's all out in the open now that you've come around this corner. I want to go after the person that we just saw that we were supposed to be here for. So I'm going to try to run past them. I want to try to... to I'm very small. I'm okay. only about four and a half feet tall. I want to try to run <laughs> right through them. All right. Um, do you want to, are you going to try to like, you're going to try to like bulldoze, like tackle your way through them? So that more, like you're like, you're just like, 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 run, a, like a. Run straight through them and then do the like duck and slide type maneuver right, right past them. Okay. Give, give, <laughs> give me, give me some sort of roll for that. I <laughs> what that would even be uh, running and dodge i have both of those all right cool okay so that. you can do that. multiple actions in this game but each time every time you do a second action it's going to be one less guy i see all right so i i run, i'm i'm running i'm, I'm running okay. past them <laughs> um so that's a n nine. Oh no wait um, i did the die did the thing again <laughs> oh you rolled a six nice yes. um Hold that thought. Hold that thought some more. <laughs> okay. I like those things. I do too. Um, 17. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you, you just barrel as fast as you can and uh, you knock them off to their sides. You are now uh, beyond the... the the bounty hunters, but you are before the, uh, the officer that's on the floor and... Uh, Lieutenant Vores, who is uh, currently, uh, who cur who just commanded the bounty hunters. I r just raced past them on my furry little legs. You did. You did. Uh, that would make uh, Jason to act next. Uh, I'm going to watch Burka just zip through the whole line and just, I'm going to try and do the same thing just because I'm a follower. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to follow her lead. Uh, 
Well, thirteen. Uh, um. Yeah. No, you don't. Uh, you you. Right as soon as uh, you try, you see uh, Burke, Burke uh, just uh, taking off. Uh, you do the same thing, and then one of the bounty hunters takes out the blaster rifle and shoots and uh, <laughs> stop, stops you dead in your tracks as you realize that <laughs> hey, just because she was able to do it doesn't mean that uh, it was. It's, it's, it's an easy task. I'll just I'll throw my arms over my head and drop to the floor as if I actually have been shot. <laughs> okay. Um, at this point, the uh, one of the bounty hunters is going to uh, uh, one of already already shot. So this next one is going to uh, shoot at. Uh, uh, it kind of like looks back and is amazed that uh, this uh, Bothan was able to run past him, but it doesn't really matter. It, it, it's small and furry. What's it really going to do? Uh, it, it takes a look at uh, the 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 two others that are or three others that are standing there and uh, decides that uh, it's going to th throw some blaster fire. Uh, at uh, the closest one, which would probably be Cresden. So uh, it's going to shoot you the blaster. Yay! Uh, can you give me a strength roll, Jason? Okay. Sixteen. Okay, yeah, you uh, you're able to uh, evade the the blaster fire. Just shoots uh, just a hole through one of my sleeves. Yep. I look indignantly at him through it. <laughs> this ben, cost me a small fortune. Ben, you're up. Uh, I will just whip out my DH17 blaster and uh, take a pot shot at that uh, very distracted bounty hunter that just tried to shoot my uh, my friend. All right. So. Uh, let's see, that's going to explode. So, 20 with the shot. You, you shot 20? 20. Uh, yeah, that's more than three times. So yeah, you shoot them uh, square in the chest and they just crumple to the ground. Uh, and I will say, belay those orders, gentlemen. We are here to take the prisoner. And, uh, all right, uh, Salarant, you're you're up next. There's one guy left, so I'm going to take out uh, my blaster pistol and try to do the same thing that uh, that Rican just did. Okay. So uh, let's see. It's this many die. I do two things. I shoot things and I pilot things. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay. I uh, do one of those two things well, at least. <laughs> uh, I got a 11. Got an 11? Okay. So he's uh, a better pilot than he is a shark. No, wait. 12. <laughs> you got 12? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's going to... Four, six. Ooh, that's not really all that great. Yeah, uh, you hit it. Um, it is now... It, you hit it in like its arm, so it's now wounded, so it's going to have a hard time uh, moving around a little bit, but uh, yeah, you hit it just fine. Uh, at this point, uh, the, the lieutenant that uh, gave the bounty hunter's orders uh, looks at the Bothan that's standing in front of them, and uh, it reaches for uh, a comlink in its pocket, tries to uh, take it out and uh, flip it on, and uh, it's trying to trying to uh, um. message the, the, the ship that uh, he's under attack, but he hasn't quite got there yet. Uh, mm -hmm. It is now... Uh, that was what his, his action was going to be. Uh, Brooke, it's your turn. All right. Uh, you said that the door where the person was that we were looking for just closed. Uh, the, the the door. I uh, know you've got uh, you've got the Dana officer Dana yeah. in front of you. Yeah. On the floor, you got the right. lieutenant in back of them, and then the oh, last doors okay. in back of them that that shut. I see. Well, I want to try to go to to um, Lieutenant Dana. Okay. Yeah. So can I get to her if I run over at this uh, point? You can. You can. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, before any of these guys try to stop me, I'm just going to go over and go, oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a doctor. I just want to check on, she's got a little, uh, she's got a little, little, got some thing right here. Hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me just check her over real quick. Um, the lieutenant uh, is going to tell you to get away from her. She's none of your concern. Uh, uh, 
and but, and he's going to take out his blaster and and hold it like and aim right right at you. I'm just going to hold my medic's bag in front of me. Be like, look, I'm not even armed. I literally just have a medic's bag. Get away from her. That's what he's he's just. She's a traitor. You need to get. Well, she's not going to do you much good if you want to talk to her and she, like, passes out from a concussion. You might want to at least let me look at her. That's a pretty serious lump I see on her head there. Um, don't worry, but she's beyond your help now. And he uh, he clicks on his, his comm link. Uh, Jason, what would you like to do? I'm going to attempt to shoot him in the comm link. <laughs> All right. Well, in the hand that's holding the comm link. Sure. sure. Give, give me a... Give me a I'm going to pull out a the saddest little holdout blaster that anyone has ever seen <laughs> because I am so determined to not have this offensive thing on in my possession, but I need it because I'm part of the rebellion. Uh, and I will just, you know, take a sad little shot with my sad little shooting skills. Sure. Eh, 13. Not bad. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you beat it. Uh, you 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 uh, you definitely hit him in the in the hand, but the the blaster just kind of it kind of just zings off his knuckles and makes him drop the comm link. Good enough for me. All right, so it goes. It drops on the floor. Sc- kind of scatters a little bit uh, on the ground. Um, and uh, Ben, you're up. Uh, I, I assume I can tell what rank this officer is. Uh, uh, yes, it's a, he's a lieutenant. Lieutenant. Um, I will summon my best uh, captain tone of voice and say, Lieutenant, drop the blaster unless you wish to have it removed along with your hand from your wrist. And I will make it very pointed action of holding my blaster uh, aimed directly at his hand. All right. Um, He uh, seems to be pretty intimidated, but uh, he's, he's... Now, kind of backing up a little bit and uh, looking like he's 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 intimidated, but he's not going to back. He's definitely not going to uh, like stay calm. Mm, disobeying an order, and I'll pull the trigger. All right. <laughs> uh, not as good this time. Uh, we're only looking at ten this time. Stupid one. Okay, and this is where the uh, I was actually waiting and giving you an extra time to let. Uh, damn it! Because usually the the bounty hunter would have gone before you, but I was I was waiting to see what you were going to do. Um, uh-huh. I I rolled a seven. So yeah, at this point the bounty hunter gets uh, that got shot in the arm uh, tries to rush over to you and uh, kind of knock you off balance so that you. Move and totally misses you, and uh, yeah, you get the you get the shot off. What did what did you hit? What did you shoot for a shot? Oh, oh, only a ten. Okay, uh, yeah, it, it just whiz, whizzes past the, uh, the lieutenant's head, uh, and uh, he kind of looks shocked and uh, knows you're like meaning business, and he then starts to turn around and starts to make a run for it. Um, uh, yeah, Brandon, you're up. All right, can I try to trip him since he ran right past us or like ran right towards us? Uh Yeah, I was I would say that's probably okay. Go ahead. Uh let's see. What would that be under? Do you have like a strength or uh, I have brawling. maybe maybe, de- maybe dexterity? Uh I guess that'd be under strength. Oh, dexterity. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll go with dexterity. See what melee, whatever, whatever you guys want to. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... a pretty lenient GM. I'm not. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you make a case for it. I'll, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably allow it. Gonna hold okay, you well, to that, uh, uh, except for Jason. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it's a. I'm gonna say it's a. It's a brawling technique that I use. Okay, I get, okay. Lo- I get low and then I try to yeah, like. You like you like run at him and try to brawl him down. Okay, yeah, I get it. All right, let's see. Why are my rolls terrible tonight? Uh, Amanda has taken is, all of the good luck. I guess I got a ten. I guess. Okay, yeah, that uh, that definitely beats my three. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you definitely uh, tackle him, and uh, he goes face first and f- just hits his face on the floor and knocks him 
and and knock some of the teeth out of his face. Uh, usually it would be his turn to go, but he's already gone a couple times, so uh, it's now uh, uh, Burke's turn. Is this guy still menacing me? He dropped his blaster now, right? Right. Okay, great. Um, then I'm going to, now that I'm no longer under threat of blaster fire, I'm just going to grab onto Dana's arm and try to get her to stand up and come with me. Uh, yeah, she's she's dead. What? What? Oh, she's dead. What? Well, would, I would, think would I would Would you like to examine sooner. her, though? Sure. I okay, come up and some... I realize, oh, no. Oh, Oh no, that's not a good start to things. We had one job. You, we had one job, and we three. failed before we even started. Would Would you like to uh, Would you like to give me some sort of perception or observation roll? I would. I would like to do that. I'll do that. Well, that's not great. That's a nine. Okay. Yeah, it's not all that that hard. I'm gonna say, you know, to, to inspect a dead person, probably pr probably pretty easy, <laughs> especially dead. since since you're a medic, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, um. Uh. Yeah. You see, see, Agent Dana. She's dressed as a, as an imperial in an, an imperial uniform, wearing the rank of ensign. She's she's dead, dead, dead. Um, further examination real reveals a small dart protruding from her exposed neck. Oh. Um. The the dart was probably fired from a rocket projector and has some sort of uh, fast-acting lethal poison on it. It's tip. Um, also, uh, you see uh, some Imperial identification pa papers, a holdout blaster, and a data storage pad. Uh, I'm going to grab the dart and the data storage pad. Okay. Uh, Kresden, what, uh, what are you doing at this point? Um, I will stand up and dust myself off and wander over to Burka. Uh, while I'm on my way, I'm going to grab the comm link yep. that the Imperial fellow dropped. Sure. Um, Everything's uh, okay here. Situation normal. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm I'm actually gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna I'm gonna key it up and, uh, and be like. Um, uh, everything's fine. Uh, we have a situation under control. Uh, proceeding on mission. Uh, you hear and, this voice. You hear this voice on the other end. What's who's on this line? Who? Who? The, you're, who's authorized? Give, give me your identification number. Um, I'll I'll key it up again. I'm I'm not actually with them. Uh, they ran off in pursuit of the uh, in pursuit of the attackers. But they've dropped their comm link. Um, I have I have the woman that they had with them with me. Um, could somebody why, why uh, could somebody her? come? Well, they left her behind and asked me to keep an eye on her. So if you could uh, maybe send somebody to the north end oh, uh, of me. the loading we're, bay, we're sending somebody. Don't worry about it. We've got plenty <laughs> of people coming your way. <laughs> um, I will then key it off and hand it over to Recon. <laughs> It's like bad karaoke night here uh, on Quen Station. <laughs> I just kind of sigh. Uh, the next time someone asks for your identification code, you just hand it to me first. That Duly noted. I'm smarter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was in the moment. They shot a hole in my outfit. I'm kind of stressed. I understand. Our our target is dead. In case you hadn't noticed. What did you do to her? I didn't do anything. She was already like this. She was alive when we got around here. So what you're Something saying is you are. we should be going. Yes. Oh, all, of a, all of a sudden, uh, after uh, a few moments, you you hear uh, these red uh, lights and, and alarms go off. Lights? Well, you, you see red lights and, and you hear an alarm go off. With a perception and, uh, skill like Burka's, yeah, she can hear red lights. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you kind of, uh, you kind of hear... Uh, you know, maybe some shuffling and and other things going on. Red lights are never a good thing. We should just mm -hmm, walk mm -hmm. away. From, let's Time walk to, away from the red yep. lights. Yes. Time to go. Uh, we best be out of here. Mm -hmm. So, are we taking dead data uh, with us? Uh, I guess we might as well take uh, take her I mean, body with us. Yeah, she may have some terrible uh, stuff. Okay, look, I got the important things off of her body. I well, I don't mean to be callous, but. 
why are we going to take her with us? Because then they don't know that she's dead. What? I. How bad are they with record keeping around here? Well, she was alive when we started mm-hmm. off, and everyone yeah. that was involved last saw her alive, except for, well, except for us. We're the only people that, that have seen her dead. Chase, that means they're going to chase us trying to get her. I'm pretty sure they're going to chase us regardless I, at this uh, point. Uh, fair. <sighs> yeah. Reckon. I like how Saloran thinks. <laughs> Bring the body. Yay. She All right, well, better. somebody else carry her. She's like half over again my size. Uh, is she? Yeah, how large is Dana's dead body? Uh, Normal she's a, size, but I'm small. Yeah, she's, she's you know, an average size, you know, female human. Can I like shoulder carrier, like fireman carrier? G- give me a strength roll. Okay. Is she oh. well oh, wait no she she didn't okay I was gonna I was gonna be all I, I will say that she she will impede your speed. No, she won't. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think I lifted her up very well. Um I got oh, a no. five. Okay, yeah, you go to pick her up and uh she's definitely too heavy for just one person to to uh to carry. Okay, I'd like to revise the plan. I'm like fumbling around and she's like flopping about deadly <laughs> oh jeez. oh no 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 i don't carry dead it. people i carry serving trays and All right, foods. Get, the, get you you get her shoulders i'll get her feet okay i'm gonna that that first bounty hunter that we down i'm gonna see if he has like any identification things on him okay. or anything useful um probably has a blaster on him i'm guessing I think, oh, he does have a med pack and a, a grenade. Okay. Uh, he, he, he was working for the uh, for the Empire, though, so shouldn't he have some sort of, like, identification system for that? Um, no, because he's a bounty hunter. Ah. They don't really have... They have their own code. Right, yes, so- yes, so a blaster, a med pack, and a grenade. The grenade is a, a D5. Or 5D. Or 5D, sorry. Good. Okay, so now that we have dead Dana and all of the stuff dead Dana was carrying, we are just going back to um, the Alabac Gold? Or... Yeah, uh, yeah we might want to get out of here. Uh, you're starting, I don't think we you're want to be on to hear, the... Uh, like, you know... Footsteps marching your your way definitely. Yeah. Nope. Sure. nope, time to go. Are bad. Thinking we don't want to be on Quen Space Station any longer, so away we go. Move yep. Purpose. Let's go. All right. So you're gonna go back onto your uh, spaceship, the Alabac Gold. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, so you're on the Alabac Gold. Are you departing Quen Sta- Space Station? With uh... with. All do haste. We're gonna, go, we're gonna go get out of here, like real quick. <laughs> All right. Do you know where you're headed? Space. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Not here. <laughs> All right. Anywhere not here would be ideal at the moment. Yeah, let's make yeah. like a just let's just make a quick jump just to get out of here. Okay. And then from there we'll see we'll check the records that Dana had and see if there's anything useful that we can. Uh, Yes. Discover from okay. that information. Take so you make the time. jump to you make the jump to hyperspace. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, you. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. You pull out the uh, the, the 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 data storage pad. Uh, can someone give me a uh, technical role for uh, programming? Um, I will. Give it a whack, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use a character point to add a dice to it, though. Okay. Oops, hang on, I cocked one up here. Oh, sweet. Uh, so let's see. Nineteen. Okay. I had one, yeah. I had one exploding. You uh, you definitely are able to get into uh, the. The, the data pad, uh, it actually gives you quite a bit of information here. Uh, let me bring it up. I had a whole printout of it. I can't find it on my sheet here. Uh, there comes up a recording of, from uh, Agent Dana. It says the following. Uh, 
Uh, Hollow Journey, Hollow Journey entry uh, springs to life as an image of Dana appears above the data pad. Uh, entry uh, 146, I believe this to be my final data entry. I'm entering this coded information in case the bounty hunters catch me. But let me start at the beginning. After three months undercover aboard the Relentless, I learned an assignment. Uh, I, I earned an assignment as assistant to Captain Harlan. Uh, the commander, our last patrol through da Dalchon system netted us three pirate vessels, but Relentless uh, sustained heavy damage to its hyperdrive. Of course, we captured a number of pirates. I was with Parlin when he interrogated one of the prisoners. What we heard still moves me. Commander Adar Talon, hero of the Old Republic, is alive. He is hiding on Tatooine. Already scores of bounty hunters have answered Parlin's call. They are to capture Talon alive and hold him until Relentless finishes repairs and arrives on Tatooine. Talon's worth to the Alliance, even if only as a rallying point, is immeasurable. We must reach him first. If you are reading this, then my, then the job is to find then the, the job to find Adar Talon is yours. This missing this mission supersedes all others. You are his only hope. With a final bow of her head, the image of Data uh, Agent Dana, Rebel Spy, and Noble Idealist fades into nothingness. Well. Oh. Huh. Huh. So I should probably tell someone this. Yeah. <laughs> well. You... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Maybe we shouldn't tell somebody uh, until we find him. Do you uh... really think that we're the best people for the job? Well, we're. I mean, we, we were well... sent to get Dana, and and Dana's Dana no more. Okay. This... Okay. But that wasn't our fault. That was just a thing that happened. Wasn't it though? Who who are we gonna reach? We're way way the hell out here. Well, also you, you said you rolled a nineteen on that roll. I did. Uh, yes. The, the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it also tells you that uh, in inside the data put the uh, some data from the relentless on uh, on the data pad, and it says that uh, it, it tells you that the. Uh, Imperial ship, the Relentless, will reach Tatooine no later than five days from now. And uh, if the if they really push the crew to the limit, it probably can get there in four. Okay, so yeah, now we have a sense of urgency. So we have no good, time. We got a good idea this. to like we can send a message by all means, uh, because it might be worthwhile to have someone at least coming behind us. Uh, but we need to get there ahead of them for sure and secure Adar at all costs. That sounds like a rebel thing to do. Sounds like that's yeah. the rob that's landed in our laps. So I think that's exactly what we've got to do. Job's a job. Okay. Uh, all right. I can get us there. So make all the things happen now, technical people. I will. I will cheer you on. Yeah, that's not me. I'm going to examine this dart thing. I want to know what it is now that I'm back on the ship sure. with all my tools. That is uh, perfectly acceptable. Let me find the... I'm going to be a weirdo and just go through all the, all the journal entries on her death pad. Sure. Um, you <laughs> know that... Uh... <laughs> You're just looking Knock at her selfies. Out, just Basically, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting to know Dana, the woman that she was. <laughs> um, That's not weird at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so it has. Uh, you you examine the the poison that was on the tip, and it's got. Uh, is it Cinari? A fast acting and extremely lethal poison on its tip. Oh. Is this a normal thing for the Imperials to have, or does this seem like uh, someone else might have used it? Uh, as far as you know, the Imperials uh, would not have something like that. Okay, so this is... Okay, well, that's unusual. Okay. Um, Jason, or uh, Kresden, uh, you're, you're accessing the data pad and, and looking up all sorts of information on... You're just, just re you're just reading your Kindle library and basic. Well, basically, I just want to get to know the woman that Dana was. I mean, if she died trying to help us, she deserves some sort of um, posthumous you, recognition, I suppose. You know that, uh, yeah. It just it just has like different files from from Adar Talon. It just kind of tells a little bit more about you know Commander Talon in case anybody found that and didn't know who who they were. Um, 
You know that uh, he served in both the Old Republic and the Galactic Empire during his career. Uh, he's known for his space uh, uh, fighting strategies and maneuvers. Does he look anything like Rickon? Um, no, he does not. Okay, because Rickon kind of did the same thing. I'm just saying. He... If we're on the ship with Adar Talon right now, I'm going to be some disappointed. <laughs> Alan has been in the ship the whole time. Whole time. <laughs> and that's our show, folks. We'll see you yeah, next time. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just Good name. Would have gotten away with it if it were for these pesky rebels. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to just I'll like make a synopsis of it all okay. and forward it to everyone else's data pad. You're just you're just kind of making you know just up. like some general notes, like you know, like a. Like a like a like a travel guide kind of thing, like you know the the, the man, the myth, the legend. You're, you're creating Star Wars <laughs> spam mail is pretty much. What yeah, you're basically, mailing. basically okay. that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Uh, yeah, okay, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, you know that you're headed. You have to head to Tatooine. Uh, the next, uh, we'll we'll fast forward a little bit. And uh, uh, Salarant, you're you're making the jump to Tatooine or to Tatooine. Yeah. Yes, okay. to the best of my abilities. Ooh. All right, look at that. I, we're at Tatooine. We're at Tatooine. I recognize this place. This dirt <laughs> is unique. Uh, you, Yeah, you uh, exit hyperspace, and uh, twin suns sparkle before your eyes as, as the star field returns to normal, and your ship emerges from hyperspace. These, your nav computer assures you, are Tattoo 1 and 2. Uh, your ship continues closer, and a vast planet shines bright as though welcoming you to its parched surface. This is Tatooine. The desert world, its endless sea of sand, blindly reflects the light of both suns through your ship's forward viewpoint. Uh, pretty much you you can see uh, around the planet there's a whole bunch of uh, spaceships in orbit around the, uh, around the planet waiting for landing clearance. Uh, none of them look imperial. Good. <laughs> That's what we want to see. <laughs> Uh, all of a sudden, you get a uh, ping on your uh, uh, on your uh, telecom or what, what do they call it? Communicator, I guess, is what it says. <laughs> and it is uh, most obviously space traffic uh, controllers, and uh, it says, uh, "Please provide your ship's uh, your ship's uh, registration code, previous port, and purpose of visiting before we grant you permission to land." Uh, this is. Uh... Alabax Gold, uh, we just have some uh, freight here that we are going to deliver, uh, and here are our access codes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll send up an escort. Uh, we'll take you to uh, Docking Bay 94. How about that? Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, anything that starts with a six? No? Six is my, uh, no, my lucky nine, number. 94. We're pretty busy here. I don't know. There's quite a, quite a line <laughs> in front of you, but uh, 94 has opened up. We thought maybe since you've got uh, a shipment to unload, these other guys, they don't have anything else that they're bringing towards uh, you know, the, the commerce of our planet. So we're, we're kind of putting you in a priority here. So is 94 good? Uh, sure, sure. That'll yes. work. Yes. All right. All right. Good deal. Um, a few moments later, uh, an old rusty... Cloud car comes flying up next to you, and uh, it goes over the comm and says, uh, "Follow me. I'll take you to sixty to ninety four." <laughs> Would have been funny if he took us to sixty four. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you uh, it leads you down to the surface uh, near, uh, you know, a, a a large kind of desert town. And uh, yeah. do we actually have a shipment, or are we just bluffing? Oh, we're totally bluffing. So you we do have you, a dead person. We could ship that. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, you it escorts you to Docking Bay ninety four, and then flies off, and uh, you land at uh, Docking Bay ninety four. Um, when we land at the Docking Bay, um, I am going to try, possibly foolishly, to uh, hack the um. The control systems for the for the for the port, just for the uh, for the manifest for the ship. Okay. To list to list that um, we've already been offloaded, that our cargo has been like from the moment we land, our cargo has already been offloaded. So that okay. if someone does come asking, we've already been offloaded. 
Okay. So we're not we don't we don't have somebody rolling up saying, "Hey, where's your stuff?" Uh, as as you land, you see these little uh, kind of like spindly service droids running around, you know, with these large flat t- heads and and round circular eyes, and and they kind of all kind of scattered around, and they're doing ma- various maintenance work. Uh, give me a roll for uh, hacking, trying to hack their. I am once again going to blow a character point on this, just because right. I want as many right. dice as I can. <laughs> uh, oh, fifteen. Okay, yeah, you you uh, you intercept some sort of uh, frequency and and uh, upload their you know a, a different uh, status of your ship to their their computers, um, and uh, it's at this point when you kind of see uh, Tordarian kind of flying around, going to. Uh, service droid to service droid kind of pointing out different things and he kind of points over at your at your ship uh before you you are done um okay well that i'm not i'm considering that to be not my problem so <laughs> i'm uh, just face down in my data pad to, to a Darian, for those that uh, aren't uh, familiar is basically this little kind of uh wrinkly round clawed creature that has these little wings on its back and kind of flitters around and it's got a big big uh, kind of bulbous nose that droops down and it's kind of like a scruffy uh, sort of like a morbidly obese bat yeah kind of kind of and like it, uh, crossed with Gonzo from the Muppets yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it kind of, kind of yeah, points Gonzo over your with wings. there you go <laughs> so uh, yeah what, uh, what, what are the rest of you guys doing I just kind of walk to the the exit of the yeah. Let's just the, the ramp. Look around and just uh, very very casually okay. wander about here. Uh, it's, it's coarse and irritating, and it gets everywhere. So right. are you. Let's move along here. <gasps> oh. <laughs> so so as you exit the ship, uh, the uh, the Tordarian goes, "Kepuda," uh, and it points and yells at one of the. Uh, uh, one of the service droids, and then uh, it kind of looks over your direction and goes, "Hey, Wanga, Wanga, what? Ah, you speak, speak basic. Ah, okay. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Got got any Minox hiding on your ship? We would you wouldn't what? believe how many Minox we've had these ba- to blast off these last few days. Filthy parasites. Some people um, don't know how to ki- don't know what they bring in on the bottom of their ships. What about sound- space mites? I won't abide any space mites. Might as so well check out. You question. That's all. Hey, I, I I want a clean ship here. I mean, it may have a bunch of algae on the outside of it. So I mean, you're gonna want to give it a once over. But I I want a clean ship. There shouldn't be no parasites or anything on there. Well, we might as might as well check out your holds while I'm here. Open them up. Open them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a uh, we're having some issues with the uh, holes opening. Properly, so uh, mm. only only the landing dock is uh, only like, mm. only the landing ramp is uh, opening right now. That's not my problem. <laughs> but I mean, but, if you uh, can just we can we can make it not my make it my problem, maybe. <laughs> hmm? ah, I, he holds out his hands well, I, and I, I, see, uh, I see what you're saying. Maybe, maybe you need a clearance code for five days. Maybe how long are you gonna be staying? Amazingly, uh, five days. Maybe, maybe, that, but, uh, maybe I need a maybe I need a clearance code, and maybe I, uh, I need I need a scrub on the outside of the ship, if you, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, mm. I, I toss him some uh, some credits. Mm. He kind of looks at it and goes, mm. "That'll get you one day." That's all we need. Have you never bribed anyone before, Salarant? <laughs> I'm. I'm I I, I I I uh I, I bring Cresden over to the to the side and I'm just like I'm a pretty honest individual. So uh <laughs> I I think I've, the, I've never um, done this before. Hmm, How much uh I think I think the normal uh, clearance uh for five days it's like twenty five a day maybe. What uh what uh what's your name, Tordarian? Ah my name's Watto. Watto. How much does this get? And I kind of swing my coat away and reveal my blaster. Oh no no no! I you could take that. Oh, no, no. What a not what a businessman. Right, and I'm asking what Just this. Just I got master speed. You've got you, uh, you've got business to do here. 
Ah, he wants the me. blaster discount. <laughs> you got to say, ah, how about this? How about this, Eddie? Hey, how about we leave it to chance a little bit? How about we uh, roll some chance cubes and uh, figure out if maybe uh, you get a little discount? What kind of business is this? I'm so confused. It's it's the shady kind, Burka. Uh, out, out of character, Doug, would gambling have any impact on a chance cube roll? Ooh. I, I um, hope so. <laughs> you got a little technique for how you roll. I'm just I'm just saying we gotta leave it up to chance. But but would would my gambling skill come into play here? I mean you could you could I mean you could ask if uh let's okay, let's 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 do this. I'll roll four dice. Okay. Y- usually, if I roll a five or six on any of them, or on two of them, then you get the discount, or you get you get full charge. If you don't roll a five or six, uh, if you only roll a, s- I'll make it only a six on three dice. Uh, otherwise, you get the you get the discount. Okay. So that's you have a gambling skill. I do. Okay, so roll three dice, and if one of them comes up a six, then you still have to pay full price. So at this point, uh, Watto hands you over these. Uh, he really doesn't want to uh, hand over. He kind of wants to roll. Uh, he kind of looks at the di- the chance cubes, and he really kind of wants wants to roll them himself. But uh, he hands them over and, and has you roll them. All right, I'll give them a roll. Uh, we have a one, a one, and a five. All right. Uh, he seems kind of pl- flabber- flabbergasted because he knows that the chance cubes are kind of weighted and they <laughs> should have rolled uh, in his favor. And uh, he goes, uh, ah, you are lucky. Um, yeah, it, a hundred credits. I got, uh, I got 25 here, only 75 more. Double or nothing? Mm. What are you doing? Later that day, as we sell the ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, like how you say, yes, let's let's do it. I will pick up the cubes, and using my non-dominant hand, I will roll the cubes. <laughs> now remember, this is your second action, so you get to roll one less die. Yeah. Oh wait, but that actually increases your chance. That actually is better for me. That makes yeah, it so, technically what, 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 what? the odds yeah, are better okay. now. All right, well whatever. Wait a second. You want me to roll four dice? Doug? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and I will keep my my dominant hand on the hilt of my blaster as I as I roll these. Uh, one, four, and three. Uh, yeah. So uh, again. Watto kind of looks and is just like, ah, today's not my lucky day. Ah. Mm. And he looks at the the twenty five credits that uh, that uh, Salarant gave him, and he's like, uh, "You you win. Uh, we'll we'll settle up uh, another chance. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get you another time." And uh, then he kind of flies away and and starts uh, bossing his uh, service droids around again, but he still pockets the twenty five bucks that uh, Salarant <laughs> gives him. That's as one would expect. I mean, we we did need a cleaning for the ship. I, I had more credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was he was too uh, he, he was, was in the moment. He, he was too annoyed that he lost two uh, gambling rolls that he should have won, and uh, <laughs> scooped up his chance dice and flew off because he's so so uh, annoyed that he did not make out very well. Oh, well. We'll get someone else to give the ship a scrub. I don't think his housekeeping is up to par. Probably just get sand everywhere anyway. Well, that's what they would use to scrub it. <laughs> Handfuls of sand. <laughs> it's bad for the paint. All right, uh, Cresden, what what are you doing at this point? Um, I am regretting not being allowed to negotiate with Watto. Uh, <laughs> 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 but um, I am going to, uh, I guess... I've been to Tatooine before. Um, yeah, I'm been. going to okay. I'm going to see if there's anyone left of the household that I used to serve still uh, in Moss Eisley, perhaps. Um, we'll say no, since since the huts have taken over, basically they're they they've forced everybody kind of 
out of uh, any kind of significance in the area. Fair enough. Um, all right. So what do we want to do with this dead Dana? We don't have Can't to worry about her. the. We don't have to worry about the dead Dana. She's she's stored. Yeah, we'll just keep well, her in the. Uh, in the... I've got, we've, we got ha- her, we've got her stowed. It's okay. Okay, but when she starts to smell after a few days, like some rotten old food, Did we he, might I, have I, to. I, I, it's a, it's a freighter. We have storage for, for bodies because it happens. What do you take me for? Do you think I don't know how to store a dead body? No, I'm sure you do. I just don't know if the ship has the facilities for that. It's a refrigerator. That's what the re- facilities for that are. It's fine. So she's in next to the food that we eat? No. Oh, my word. There's t- there's climate controlled storage on the ship. It's okay. okay. All right. We I just need to hey. focus on the alive person we need. On the to alive find. person. Yes, Ooh, we should give him a code name. We don't want to be running around saying Adar Talon to anyone. Right, but we do need to fi- find him, so... Do we have we... any... The, in the journal entry that, that I had, was there any sort of indication of a precise location, or is it just vagary? No, just... Uh, you just know that he's on Tatooine somewhere. All right, so we need to find a local or someone who knows things. Okay. Hmm. Where would we find that? Uh, uh, basically, you can you can download a technical readout. Are you going to take the data pad with you, Jason? I mean, oh, uh, for sure, yes. Jason? Okay, I uh, never go yeah, anywhere without a data pad. You download the uh, the the. You know how like certain places, certain towns have like uh, maps, like those mm-hmm. like little placement map placement. You get one of those yeah. uh, kind of uploaded to the data pad there, uh, so it kind of shows you where prominent places are in the in all right this town that you're in called Mos Eisley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess while we roam the spaceport, um, if, no, if we're going anywhere in particular, I'll just follow the group. I will just browse the data pad and see what I can learn about, uh, you know, just any place that has like information storage or that sort of thing, or any place where like, because I've I've done I've, I've worked for a crime family before, so I know like I would imagine how to contact people in uh, like a CD underground kind of thing. Right. Okay. So I'll, look for, I'll look for places like that. Um, you do know that, that if you are going to be searching Tatooine, you're probably going to need a mo- mode of transportation. You're probably going to need supplies to uh, take, take you. A lot of water. Yeah, so... It's pretty dry uh, there. So basically, you leave you leave the uh, the spaceport, uh, uh, the docking bay, um, and uh, the morning rush is already underway as you exit the, the docking bay. Humans, new, numerous droid models, and aliens of every description move through the crowded streets, uh, concentrating uh, intently on their own business. The space is hurried for, for such a backwater world, and not even the blistering heat of the twin suns, not yet full in the sky, can slow it down. Land speeders roar by, uncontrollably close. Uh, uncomfortably close, I'm sorry, uh, in those in these narrow walkways and swarms of small, rancid-smelling creatures in hooded robes jostle past you. One of them stops to paw at your, shi- at your shiny blaster, uh, Presden. This is most Eisley Spaceport, a more wretched hive of scum and villainy you'll not find elsewhere. I will shove the little bugger away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right. As you as you shove it, as you shove it, it says, "Utini," and kind of, uh, kind of like shuffles, uh, shuffles. Uh, Utini, you in the face if you come back here. Oh, rude! Very, very rude. Um, one of the first things that you see is a uh, is uh, spaceport speeders. It's a repulsor vehicle shop that sells, rents, and buys. Land and air speeders. Mm. All right. I will um, approach the counter or whoever looks to be in charge. Uh, you see that there's there's three different models. Uh, there is a, a an old Ubrickian Bantha class uh, cargo skiff, uh, a rebuilt uh, Sorosub Seraph flash speeder, and uh, Luke Skywalker's old land speeder. <laughs> it looks like it's been... Uh, <laughs> Has a couple uh, modifications to it, and uh, there's some rather odd-looking individuals uh, looking over the space spe- space speeders as uh, uh, you approach the, uh, the 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 spaceport speeders. All right. Um... Uh, as as you do, you can hear there's uh, there's some 
uh, haggling going on between one of the ship owner, the uh, ship owner, and uh, the price of the of Luke's old vehicle, and then uh, it's, it looks like the Ubrickian. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. Oh, the the uh, I'm sorry, is it Vuvuvrian? V u v r i a n. What is that? How do you how do you pronounce that, Ben? Vuvuvrian. Vuvuvrian. The the Vuvuvrian who is like kind of got this big bulbous head. Looks kind of kind of insectoid with like a hooded robe on it. Kind of looks at you. And uh, then finishes dealing with with the person that uh, that she has in front of her, and uh, she uh, slowly starts walking towards you. Um, okay. Can I interest uh, you in a speeder? You can, in fact. Uh, I'm looking to charter a speeder for possibly a few days, um, maybe buying if it's the price is right. Mm. Um, it needs to be able to transport five people and equipment for several days. She kind of takes a, a look and she does like this thing where she's counting the four of you. Five five people, hmm? We may be picking up a guest. Mm. A local, probably a guide. A local? Is it anybody I know? I have no idea who you know. <laughs> I've only just met you. Well, I'm I am uh We Sola. The merchant here that uh, spell that sells space speeders to uh, to everyone. I I have the finest land and air speeders in Mos Eisley, and she like pats one of the the, the, the speeders next to her, and like parts of it kind of fall off. Oh. <laughs> she, she's like, this is this one right here is a good model. The uh, modifications, I don't don't worry about that. I I'll I'll, uh, I'll fix that. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, do you have anything that might fit our needs, though? Mm, I mean, I've got this nice model right here, and she uh, she credit she she uh, motions to uh, Luke's land speeder. Mm, this is a I, nice model right here. This is a nice model. I will, only four thousand credits, and only room for looks to be two people. <laughs> uh, no, you can you can add more people. It's it's fine. Look, it's, I, got, it's, it's got the top off of it. Just think how you'd be like cruising in the desert with the wind with in your hair. Face full of dirt. Yes. Uh, so good. <laughs> Does it come with a sidecar or something? <laughs> the extra people in there? The, uh, the X34 you want 4,000 credits for. It's a good, it's, look at the shape it's in. I even did modifications to it myself. I can take the cockpit off of a starfighter and call it a modification. Doesn't mean it makes it star worthy. Okay, I see. I see you're a man of good tastes. And uh, how about this uh, Ubrickian Bantha class uh, cargo skiff that I've got here? Cargo sounds excellent. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, who are you? I mean. What, what what are you doing? And what do you what do you, you, you mean? I, I don't want to be too nosy, but you know. But you're going to be nosy. What uh, I understand. What, what business do you <laughs> do you have uh, that uh, you need a uh, land speeder for? Well, we're going to be going out into the dunes. Uh, we have a uh, meeting uh, with someone. Oh, who... nice. Yeah, nice. Uh, nice to have. Yeah. And we'd like to we'd like to maybe take a tour. Around are you, sites, are, you know? are you meeting anybody I know? I know lots of people, lots of people. I I am Winsola, who uh, is the famous famous uh, spaceport speeder, uh, you know, owner. Right? I I know everybody. It's entirely possible, but we're not entirely sure who we're meeting yet. We haven't been told that. Our guide will have that information for us. Oh, you you already have a guide. All right, all right, good. You just gonna going to kind of uh, suggest uh, some some folks that I know, but. You you've got it all under control, all right? Uh, yeah, this uh, this Panther class cargo skiff uh, has uh, two thousand five hundred credits. Does it look like it'll do the job? How long is that for? Uh, we get to keep it. Oh, we're buying. We're not renting now. We get to keep it. I mean, 
I can't guarantee that you're going to bring it back in top shape. This is a top class cargo skiff. From the looks of the other speeder, you can't guarantee that it's going to leave the lot in good shape. I don't. Just I told saying. you that was that was a, a, an accident that I would fix that myself. Just don't worry about it. Um, I will consult with Recon, I guess, since he seems to know more about speeders than I do. Mm. <laughs> I can haggle a price, but I don't know a damn thing about what this thing can do. <laughs> uh, it'll it'll do what we need. It's fairly quick. I mean, it'll hold enough people. I think it's, it'll hold, definitely hold the five, the four of us. The only problem is the open top. If we get stuck out there, we may want a little more shelter to take with us. We could maybe buy some shelter. We could stop and you know set up a camp or something. I suppose. And at this Stop point, uh, Winslow like uh, puts her head in and is like, "You need supplies, Giant guys. You, yes, you should go to yes, Loops. Winslow. You should go to Loops uh, General Store. Loops, good guy. You like him. And then you'll like the kickback that you get when you send us to him. Yes, I don't get any kickback. I just like to help everybody. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I was going to suggest a uh, a guide for you, but you already have one. Well, I mean, we have a guide in mind, but that doesn't mean that we can't make different choices. Um, how about this? We'll let you recommend a guide if you give us a deal on the Bantha Two. So I'm going to help you twice. Yes, and you're going to feel fabulous about it. That's... You said you like to help people not that doesn't put credits in my pocket my friend oh it will when we bring it back and give it to you so you're going to pay for the speeder so we're going to give you the money for the speeder and we're going to use that speeder and your guide and then when we're done we're going to bring the speeder back to you and you're going to take it back and you can sell Ooh. it again what so you can what? get twice as much money for the speeder hmm i do like how you think and, and it will be in working order? Well, yeah. We're, I, I'm not strong enough to drag it back. It better be in working order for bringing it back. And if we don't bring it back, what are you out? I'm out a speeder and uh, some substantial money. Oh, well, no, I'm giving you money for it. But not top dollar. No, there's the potential. See, this is what we're working on now is potential. What you, what you don't realize is that my scout is... Uh, Probably one of the best scouts in the pla on the planet. He has been here since the beginning. He is one of the original settlers of Tatooine. And his name would be. Mm, I'm not going to tell you that until you buy my my speeder. How well, there you go. So you sell me the speeder at a reasonable price, and I will take your guide, and we'll all be happy. Well, maybe my my, my guide won't. Maybe my scout won't want you. Oh, I'm sure that you can be persuasive. Why don't you tell me why you're here, and uh, I can tell the scout, and maybe then he'll uh, he might be interested or not. Well, we don't know that ourselves yet. We're going to find out shortly. I don't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> do you want my speeder? Yes, I do. And then he's going to look over at uh, Recon and, and uh, Salarant and be like, Do you want my speeder? It'll do. 1750 credits. I'm going to have to talk to the boss. We don't usually sell them for this low. I'm going to have to crunch some numbers. <laughs> Aren't you the I'm boss? Sure. You said you were the boss. You, yeah, you just said that you owned and operated this I, boss. Is there like some lousy free coffee somewhere around here? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Winslow was was uh, was hoping that you didn't rec remember that uh, she said that she was the boss, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, she goes into the next room and shuts the door and starts having an argument with herself. <laughs> like, hey, boss, I uh, I can make a sample. It's going to cost us a little bit. We don't sell them for that low. You can't let them go. Well, boss, I, they're really good people. I'm. And she basically goes back and forth, and then finally she like shuts the door behind her. Like, All right, we don't usually do this, but uh, the boss said we could uh, we could sell it to you this one time. But you got to refer right. some folks to us. Oh, by all means, I will happily sing your praises to the entire starport. 
I, I will, with the exception. We happen to be able to drive this for two days without it breaking down on us. Oh, yeah. If yeah, it lasts no, us, then we'll definitely uh, recommend people here. And, and she, like, taps taps this uh, the, the, the cargo skiff, and uh, you can hear something kind of... Uh, break off and inside and kind of like <laughs> clink around. Clunk, clunk, oh. clunk, 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 clunk. She, just, she just hopes that you don't hear it. Uh, she just kind of pats it a little bit harder so it kind of grounds out the sound. It's like, oh yeah. Uh, show, show, cre credits, please. I will produce the 1750. Awesome. You oh my. Money yeah, that's a lot of credits. Drop. I thought we were going to have to pool them together. For that's that. what I was thinking. I was like, oh man, this is pricey. I was going to try and haggle her down even further. <laughs> Uh, so as, as you hand over the credits, uh, Winslow says, uh, so if you let me know what uh, you're in here for, what you're here on uh, Tatooine for, uh, I have a scout, old Arno, who, uh, one of the original folks of Tatooine that knows this planet inside and out that would, uh, be able to help you quite a bit if, but uh, he only takes, he's out, uh, scouting at the moment, but, uh, I can send him a message and tell him what your plans are and what you're here for. Uh, we may take <laughs> you up on that. Give us some time. Let's talk to, to talk it over and we'll be back. Yeah, we'll go get our supplies. And when we come back, if you could let your, your, uh, your guide know that we're in need of services, uh, when we return, we will have more information for you as well. All right, all right. Uh, thank you for your business. And she puts puts the credits in her pocket and uh, goes on to the next customer. That uh, as as she walks away, she goes, oh, "I hope the next customer is not uh, as difficult as those those folks are." <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, yeah. All so right. Now you've got so yourselves a, a, a Bantha class a, uh, a functional speeder. <clears throat> Skiff. So. Do the rebels have any contacts here on Tatooine that we could uh, reach out to about uh, about this? This no is a one hundred percent backwater planet. Ain't <laughs> nothing going on out here. Uh, we we are the rebel contacts out here. Uh huh. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> uh, okay, Urka, can you access the uh, the Bolton spy net? I'm sure there may be a couple things <laughs> <laughs> out here. Maybe they know. Maybe they know something. Uh, I, I know no. you have some uh, some access. I really don't. Do you know why I became a medic? Because I was a bad spy. I got kicked out of spy school. All right. All right. So um, you've got this. You've got this uh, skiff, and you're just kind of. We have a way to get around. We should start uh, asking questions. We have a physical description of this guy. We know what he looked like, right? So uh, yeah. we can start asking if people have seen somebody who looks like him who arrived around the time that we thought he was supposed to have died. There Was was there a photo or like an artist's rendition on the data pad at all? No, um, yeah, like we'll, we'll say there was because there were person. statues and yeah, yeah. Statues. yeah. yeah like the guy is well, not exactly incognito. Right. Yeah, I mean, we know people, who this person is. Yeah, he's a pretty legendary, uh, you know, fighter and, and uh, person that. The only concern I have with walking and like going door to door, flashing his face is going to be like we're going to let everybody in town know that we're looking for. Well, a we don't. Guy. We don't need to flash his face. Just be like, hey, we're looking for a uh, a uh, uh, a guy who would have come here about X time ago, whatever the date was that we thought he died. At this point, uh, Winslow uh, pops her head in again and is like, ah! you guys are looking for a guy? Oh, my word. <laughs> uh, yes, Winslow, yes. we've already established this. Yes. Oh, what guy? <laughs> Do we show her? Or actually, you know what? I'll describe Adar Talon to her. Right. Hmm. Adar Talon. I've never heard of the guy. I didn't say the name. I just described oh. the guy. <laughs> yeah. Would have arrived here about X number of years or whatever. I forget how long ago that was that that happened. Yeah, no. The only person that would probably know that would probably be uh, probably old Arno. Yeah, no. I never, yeah. I've never seen a guy like that looks like that. Yeah, I will uh, whip out the directory and look up that name. <laughs> where's uh, where's where's old? Old, what did you say? Old Arno. Did, did Old Arno. Where, no, he's, he's out where scouting. He? He's a good scout. 
Oh, when do we expect him back? So I don't know when, when he's done scouting. I will send a message to him. All right, fair enough. So, all right, where can we get some uh, just basic supplies around here? Uh, Loops General Store. Send them. Tell them. Tell Loop that uh, when Soa sent you. All right. Beautiful. Also, where beautiful can we get family. some drinks? Where family. can we get some drinks around here? Uh, there's a cantina down the, down the street. You can go down there and yeah. Okay. All right. We will go. To, we will go to Loop's General Store. Uh, tell tell Loop and Carl that that uh, that I said hi. Okay. Okay. Right. I, ma I make a note to to write down that she does not say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, you go down a little further down, and uh, you see a uh, a general store, and it is uh, it is basically run by two uh, Shistavians. I think that's how you pronounce it. They're basically like wolf people, and uh, they're behind the counter, and they're just kind of busy tending to different people that come up to the counter and ask for di different things, and uh, yeah. Welcome, welcome, friends. Uh, come on, come on, come in. Uh, 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 hi. Uh, hi. Uh, what uh, what brings you to uh, our general store? I only have like one N not NPC voice for some reason. I don't that's know what the, that that's is. That's the Star Wars NPC voice. <laughs> yeah. That's the one you got. Yeah, it was an excellent toy Darian, though. <laughs> Thank you. I worked on that one for a while. Mm. <laughs> uh, we just need some general supplies. We're going to be. Uh, Let's say we're going to be out camping for a couple of days. Hmm. You're going to be camping. Okay. Um, so you need some hmm, some med packs? Uh, yeah, I might need a med pack or two. We'll definitely yeah, need some packs. rations, maybe a tent packs. or so. We need food. We have a burka. We don't need a med pack. Okay. Well, burka, yeah. I mean, I, I have some med packs. It wouldn't hurt to stock <laughs> up. And also, we will need food. Uh, I do have a miniature uh, evaporator water converter. Water I don't know, is good. I don't oh, know that's if that's bad. something that you need. It's only 2,000 credits. It's oh. on sale. Good grief. Is these are in, these are in high demand right now. Look look at the sleek design and the small form factor. I, I, I kind of like uh, whisper over to, to, to Recon. I'm like, we, we, we need that. We're going to. I'm, I'm starting to get. I'm sorry. I'm trying to dry out right now. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Mong Cal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs water. It's a priority. <laughs> Maybe we no could do like a cost, bulk we have discount. To get that. Moisturize. Like, uh, uh, we... uh, loop, loop, loop. His one of his ears kind of perks up, you know, like dogs do. And uh, it's <laughs> like, uh, you said bulk discount. Well, there's a possibility that we may be buying quite a bit. Is uh, is there is there like a threshold? If we buy X number of Y, we get Z. I mean, uh, what are you, what are you in the market for? I mean, I, I don't mind. This is a hot item, though. This is something that's very, very valuable in this. Uh, I, yes, I've I mean, I've, I've I been sell to these all day long times. at two thousand credits. These I, I can't aware, even keep yeah. on the shelf. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke, but no. Um, I mean, med packs. I, I have multiple med packs. Those are only two hundred credits, but uh, you know, we can. If you're looking for multiples, okay. we can we can many, make it. We can put something together. So we need shelter. We need water, yes. and we need yeah. food for, what are we thinking, three days, five days, two days, one day, three to five minutes? I don't know. Uh, three to five days. Yeah. Okay, so Maybe five days tops. Yeah. We need food, water, shelter, anything else other than medicates? Uh, my, uh, maybe some blaster packs just in case. You never know. Maybe we'll, want, just, maybe we'll want to hunt some game out there. As uh, as you start naming off things, he's he's kind of uh, entering things in a in a data pad himself, uh, kind of checking out his inventory and, and making sure that he's got everything that uh, you're you're mentioning. And, okay, uh, so if we were to buy all of that from you right now, what kind of discount you're going to give us? Mm. I'm thinking you throw in the evaporator. Oh, also, I need a hat. If you have a nice like uh, sun hat, that'd be great. 
he looks over he looks over at his wife and his wife takes one off of the the wall and kind of throws it over frisbees <laughs> it's o- over to to uh to him and uh, he catches it and uh kind of tosses it your way and uh, so this 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 will keep you cool oh that looks great sal <laughs> You've got a mon castle. Does it like since it points out the back? Does it does it like not like cover your head and just kind of? Oh like, no! It, oh no! It's just on the back. <laughs> He's gonna have the weirdest sunburn ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he says, uh, "Yeah, we can let, let let me total it up. I'll get it all from uh, from the back office and or the back room, and and I'll put it all together and put it all here." Um, so he goes out to the back to the uh, the back room. To get all the supplies, and uh, as he goes to the back room, his wife is is on the other side of the store, kind of uh, waiting on customers. And in walks uh, a Jawa and a Gamorian, and uh, they kind of walk in like they own the place. And a Jawa uh, walking like he owns something. Yeah, this is and uh, <laughs> looks looks over at uh, looks over at everything, and kind of looks looks at the Gamorian and says. And then uh, it's that jaw off from earlier. Then then he kind of slides up to the the counter. Uh, doesn't kind of close to where you guys are, but uh, doesn't really kind of pay you any attention. Kind of like pushes himself in up to the counter. And uh, just as uh, Loop comes out of the back room with his arm full of uh, supplies, uh, he kind of just sighs, shakes shakes his head, and. Uh, Says, uh, I'll, "I'll be right back with you guys. Wait just a second. And he puts puts the stuff on the counter and goes over to the uh, goes over the Jawa and the the Gamorian standing behind him and the the Gamorian's kind of snorting and and uh, the 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 Jawa holds his hand up and is like, Utini, Utini. And uh, Loop opens the register and kind of takes out some of the money and and uh, a Jawa shakedown." <laughs> Hands, hands, it, hands it over to uh, hands it to the Jawa and and uh, the Jawa stands there and kind of counts the credits a little bit. Is he like your and then, uh, and then manager? kind of just what's that? Is he your manager there? Uh, he's ever since the huts came into town. This it's just the price that we have to pay for protection. It's. I- Tried to warn everyone that the wow. huts were no good, and no. you know, just it's it's fine. It's fine. you know, we kind of knew that this might happen, so we're you know, it's fine. It's fine. Seems and the like the Jawa fine. holds up his hand. What Danny? What Danny? And the the Gamorian kind of grunts a little bit, and uh, Loop kind of reaches back into the drawer and pulls out some more credits and, and hands it to him. And the the Jawa kind of holds it up and puts it in his pocket, and they they proceed to walk out the. Uh, proceed to walk out of the store. Wow. This place is awful. Uh, yes, I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, nah, so, hmm. Anyway, about those supplies. Ah. <sighs> he, he just kind of shakes, he kind of takes his clawed ha- hand and uh, rubs, his, rubs his forehead and says, uh, well, I, I was going to give you a pretty good discount on all this stuff, but uh, I don't know if I can afford to give you the discount that I was hoping now. Uh, Shall I just walk out with our discount? Well, I I, I, I didn't. I forgot that uh, you know that they were kind of come in today, and you know I just totally. You know how it is here in these backwater towns. You just kind of you don't want to mess with the the riffraff that, that kind of controls the area, and you got to make sure that. You know, so you keep a low profile. In Ten minutes earlier, we would have <laughs> we got, we got a better deal. <laughs> well, yeah, because I would have had more money to to kind of pay, you know, Jabba off and keep uh, keep those guys off my back. But uh, now I got, you know, it's just me and my wife, and we've got to we, we've we've got to, you know, pay our bills. And oh yeah, god, business. it's a sob story. Save me. It is. It really is. I mean, so so I think the med pack, the tenting, and all you know, all this stuff. I mean, thirty thirty five hundred credits. This is a lot of credits. This is an expensive. It's not mission. a bad deal for the evaporator and the credits and the tents and everything. 
Yeah, I it's actually I not a bad deal. All right, um, I have yeah, and the sun hat. Don't, sun hat. Don't well, and that. the hat. Oh, yeah. Yes, we can't get the hat. You know, yeah. I, I throw yeah. in the I'll throw in the sun hat for free, and it's like yeah. one of those sun hats that, that says most eyes most icely on the front, <laughs> and like sun. embroidered. <laughs> touristy. Yeah, one of the most touristy things that you can buy. Okay. Um, all right. How much money does everybody have? I have eight hundred that I can throw into that. Uh, I can give about four seventy five. Look, okay, I am so... but a I am but a poor rebel doctor. I have three hundred whole credits to my name. We're gonna we're gonna sell the ship. <laughs> 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 well, Saloran's not looking. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to save. I, I mean, I, I I have more credits than that, but I wanted to, uh, you know, just in case we need credits in the future. Does, does, pay someone else. Does Rakan have any? Uh, Rakan have any? Yeah, he tapped out. I bought the speeder. You expect me to add <laughs> Rakan did more? buy the speeder. Well, I mean, hey, we need these supplies. We're not going anywhere. You know there, bud. R- Rakan is like the, the, the wealthy friend that, that, that yeah. goes out and pays for everybody is when they go out and do things. Yeah. He's the one that has the good job while everybody just graduated from college and is still looking for, uh, mm-hmm. looking for work. Fine. I can drop in like 800 credits, but that's uh, I'm tapped out after that. Okay, so that'd be 16-ish. And if we take like two hundred off of off of Burka, that's eighteen. I'm more than willing to uh, throw in what I have to the pot, but it's just not much. We may be resorting to theft here, folks. <laughs> All right. We're going to further rob these poor people. <laughs> uh, so, so how much how much uh, do you have altogether? Conservatively, um, like. Almost two thousand. So enough for the uh, the water uh, evaporator or whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. That would be all we could buy. Though we would have no food, no med packs, no tenting. I have med packs. That's that's okay. Yeah, I we mean, have to take yeah. that off. We definitely need water, however. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, non-negotiable. That's true. Yeah. We're yeah. We can't negotiate that. Yeah. Instead of like a big fancy. Um, like tent or something. Can we just get a tarp? Yeah. What kind of special are you running on tarps? <laughs> and maybe just the mon cal can ask if she... if it's a tarp. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tarp. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. I think you need to kick Ben out of this game. <laughs> I, I think I think that, that, that you know what it actually says mute mic here on my screen. I'm going to do. <laughs> Oh. So no, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he'll he'll go about back and he kind of exchanges the tent for the tarp and kind of puts away some of the med packs that uh, he thought to use. And as he's putting stuff away, you can see his like he's physically getting sadder and sadder because not only did he now have to pay off of Jawa's goon or Jabba's goons, but this sale isn't going to be the as jackpot that he, he was, was hoping, hoping that he yeah. was going to get. Yeah. This is all the money we have, sir. We would love to buy yeah, more things. Li- but... You are literally extorting us now. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he says, uh, all right, here, take the miniature vapor- v- vaporator water converter, the hey, uh, med pack you. and the, the, the tarp. And the uh, yeah, here's, uh, I'll cut you a deal. 1800 for the f- for all of it. Sold. You're a scholar and a gentleman, sir. And at, this, and at this point, he's just happy just to get some money back into his register than anything else. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you're going to go put those in your skiff, I'm guessing? Hey, we are now hobos living on Tatooine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay, we'll everybody else out. is, too. So Yeah, well, we blend in. Uh, okay, so uh, we have supplies. We have a speeder. We have... No idea where Adar Talon is. <laughs> oh, next, next I up. Realized something. What mm-hmm. is that? And uh, I go back into the into the shop, and I mm. uh, I produced the blaster that I took off of the uh, off of the bounty hunter, and I was like, by the way, how much? Can Everyone we ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just present it to him. No, it's a hold up. But <laughs> mm. let, 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 let me see that. Let me see the blaster here. He looks it over. He's like, uh, 
Yeah, I'll give you. I mean, I give you a good deal on on the lot. Uh, I'll give you four hundred credits for this. All right. So I, I, I give him the blaster. All right. And you, you, know, you, you know what? You know what? I I, I appreciate the hat. I will take three hundred, and you can have the rest. All right. All right. So he, he gives you uh, gives you three hundred back. And then and... I come back out and meet everyone else. All right. Okay. Um. All right. Who has a plan to find Adar Talon? Well, uh, I'm not sure, but I could definitely go for a drink right now. Yes. Yeah, we could. Yeah, let's. Yeah. You know what? You never know what kind of uh, individuals you find at a, at a cantina. Yes. Let's go get our drink on. All right. Good place to ask around. Exactly. We will loosen some tongues or mandibles or whatever speaking appendage these things have. <laughs> uh, yeah, you go to the uh, cantina. It's uh, <laughs> it's basically how you picture it. It's kind of this, uh, you know. It's the cantina. It's the cantina from from Star Wars, and uh, you know you get the little band uh, playing in the in the background the, the little cantina song and uh you know there's a man behind the counter and there's uh all sorts of locals participating in drink and talk and everything and yeah a din uh, a din uh, the din of the crowd covers the common room like a thick blanket uh, uh, but above the noise and a catchy infectious beat plays it is a swinging upbeat tune, and the alien band bouts it loudly. The bar itself is stocked with many odd-shaped flasks, bottles, and beakers, and tubes overflowing, overflowing with strange and familiar liquids. Uh, there are all sorts of folks inside, and uh, yeah. You tell me what, uh, what you'd like to do. Hmm. Uh, I will sidle up to the bar and order a reasonably priced beverage. <laughs> right. uh, you know, a slightly <laughs> overweight uh, man with brown hair uh, takes your uh, takes your order and hands you a hand you a hands you a glass of something. <laughs> a glass of something. It's something. It's. it's I will. I will take it and swirl it around for a second to make sure it's not got lumps in it and drink it. <laughs> Um, and then I will ask the bartender, um, when was the last time anyone saw Adar Talon before he died in this town? Do you know? Are you familiar with that name? I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, I've never, we've got a lot of regulars here, but uh, no one underneath that name. And as, as you're, to, as he, just as he like finishes that sentence, uh, like this old, gray-haired woman behind at the counter uh, like right next to you says uh, you know if you're looking for information in this town uh, you should probably just talk to uh, Labria Labria knows everything okay he knows about the time when the sand people attacked my family and I hate sand people Sand people are the worst. But uh, Labria, he knows everything. But he knows about it, you know? <sighs> Have you ever seen a sand person? Okay, okay, okay. let's cut short this uh, racist tirade. I, I, and uh, no, wh where can I we mean, find... I mean, I heard they have a pretty rich heritage. <laughs> <laughs> where, where can we find this person? The sand people? No. No. Oh, oh. Funny, uh, but no. <laughs> Labria, yeah, he's yeah, um, Labria, that, yeah, yeah. Where can we find? Oh, uh, she like takes another swig of her them. drink. She takes another oh, swig of her drink. This sounds reliable already. <laughs> Puts down the glass and she says, uh, "He should be here sometime." Uh, he's, you know. What's he look like? In case you're unconscious by the time he gets here, so we can talk to him. He's a Devonian. Dev, 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 Devorian. What do, you, what do you call those, Ben? Devorian. Devorian. Ben's that sounded very drunk, though, our, so well done. 
our yeah. our resource here, our lore uh, resource. And uh, basically, it's got kind of like this uh, reddish. It kind of looks like a devil kind of person. Oh, well, those guys! Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. So easy to spot then, Andy. Just if is this you're a regular go out... thing? He comes in here like most nights. <sighs> yeah, he comes in here all the time. Are you okay? Just if you're gonna go out in the desert and you see Bantha tracks, go in the opposite direction. Because sand people are... The worst, yes, you mentioned. Uh, are you okay? You look like you have a headache or something. Are you are, are you alright? And the guy behind the counter uh, kind of just kind of holds <laughs> up his hand and, and kind of nods his head and just... <laughs> this is just a thing. Yeah, okay. we okay. just, you know... It's just how it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then she just kind of like puts her arm down and puts her head on top of the bar and uh, on her... Uh, and uh, he goes, yeah, just, it's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's grab a table then, and we will wait until our Devronian shows up. Sounds like a plan. All right. Whilst drinking conservatively. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, you take a table, and uh, there's all sorts of uh, stuff going on. There's, there's some folks that uh, kind of come in. And take a table, and they kind of ask some of the locals some questions. Um, they definitely don't look like they belong here on this uh, on this planet. But uh, yeah, they they also take a take a seat. Uh, you can hear the rustling and hustle and bustle. You know, everybody's kind of just doing their own thing. Uh, a few few moments later, uh, a Jawa walks in. Followed by oh, a Gamorian. Here we go again. And then they go up to the counter. <laughs> These guys. And uh, they, they, the Jawa holds up a hand to the bartender mm -hmm. and goes, Lutini! Lutini! <laughs> and uh, you can see the barkeep, the bartender kind of just <sighs> sigh and go into his drawer and pull out some of the credits, put it, uh, put it in the Jawa's hand. And at this point, uh, the Gamorrean has an axe, and he's just kind of swinging it in his hand a little bit and just kind of doing a little more intimidation as the drool comes down his snout. Ew. And uh, what's the, the, bar general, the bartender... Like, what's that? What's the general feel of the, like... Does everyone kind of stop and watch this, or is this very, like, commonplace for them? This, this seems Routine. like it's pretty pretty commonplace. And as... as, uh, as the barkeep uh, is about to hand over the, the, the credits to the Jawa. The old lady at the counter uh, says, You know, you've got one of those uh, sand crawler things, right? Why don't you just run over the sand people? <laughs> and then, like, she collapses on the counter. <laughs> okay. Um,. And I'm... and uh, and and the Jawa kind of like looks over, looks over at the uh, looks over at the old lady, and then looks over at uh, the bar the bartender, and says, uh, "Utini," <laughs> and kind of points to uh, points to the lady and pockets the credits, and they proceed to walk out of the uh, cantina. Um, I'm going to I don't know I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to get up and stumble my way over to the door with my drink in hand, sort of like dribbling it everywhere, and I'm going to fall in front of the Jawa, not on the Jawa, in front of the Jawa. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm going to move to stand up, and I'm going to like put my hand out as if I'm looking for something to grab onto, and I'm going to grab the Jawa's shoulder and kind of lever myself up, not. I don't want to push him down or nothing. I'm just going to use his short littleness to stand up again. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to try and lift some of the credits out of his pocket. Okay. I'm prepared for what, my what, dice to what, fail. What me. kind of skill are you going to use to, to roll that? Um, Jason, uh, okay. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be uh, a perception skill because that's where the gambling and the con man kind of thing comes in. And it also has sneak into it, so I'm thinking it's a perception a perception check. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, give me... Uh, now, you will have a Gamorrean that's right behind him that kind yes. of acts as his bodyguard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I would uh, I would say uh, roll roll uh, really well in this uh, roll. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow my force point to double the dice. Wow. Okay. Oh. So, that's going to give me three extras. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Just put those two nasty ones over there. Uh, 26 total, but I did roll a one on my uh, my explodey die. So that takes one of my dice rolls. Yeah, take, right. take, 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 take your lowest die away, I guess. We'll... Okay, so 10, uh, 20. Then okay. Instead of twenty. Yeah, you uh, you pull that off. You reach into the Jawa's pocket and uh, take out uh, a couple hundred credits, and uh, you kind of slide a hand and take out a couple couple hundred credits. At this point, uh, the Gamorian, uh, you've you've made contact with uh, the Ewok. I'm not with the Jawa. The sorry, Ewok. Uh, not the Ewok. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Uh, Whichever fast, short thing yeah, it is. It's... We haven't we haven't fast forwarded to that episode yet. Um, so. Uh, we he kind of takes his his forearm and kind of shoves you away from uh, this very important Jawa that uh, you have no right touching and and uh, I'll, harassing. I'll 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 completely go. I'll go with the. I'll kind of like play into the throw mm -hmm. as it, to to make him feel super tough. I'll like kind of like try to like leap even further away as if he's like flung me halfway across the bar kind of thing. Okay, and I'll just collapse in a heap on the floor. And uh, as you do that, uh, the Jawa looks over at you and points and says, Utini, Utini! And then they, they proceed out of the cantina. Okay. Um, I will meander my way back over to the table with my extra credits. <laughs> what was that all about? Um, it was about getting some money back from uh, a butthole. <laughs> oh. Okay. And I'll 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 pull I'll pull out my, my handful of credits and just kind of be I'll I'll just like palm them into my pocket again. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm so glad I didn't die doing that. Mm. Well, I guess the next round is on Creston. <laughs> so uh yeah, you uh, stay in the cantina. There's not much the, you know, there's just the local hustle and bustle going on. Uh, the the folks that uh, came in that kind of looked out of place uh, after they've asked a few questions and had a few drinks, they get up and kind of walk out and go out to the cantina. I'd say that was suspicious, but we're doing the same thing. Yeah, those people definitely. Uh... <laughs> those people had the same idea we had is what they had is what's going on there. <laughs> Were they all human, or were they? Uh, uh, they they had various armor. Species? They had armor and weapons on them, and yeah, they're oh. all they're oh. different. They're some different mm. species that. Uh, That's not those people look mighty suspicious. No, yeah. no, 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 no droids, because of course there's no droids allowed in no this droids, no. No droids allowed. Mm -hmm. We don't serve their kind here. Not yet, anyway. Yes. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um... So some time has gone by and this fella still hasn't shown up, eh? Right. Do we want to wait more or do we want to go and search? Well, uh, I think Juanita is guy probably return now. We can, go, uh, we can go visit her. Juanita did say she was going to get a message to him, yeah. Maybe maybe she got a reply. We could check that. Mm -hmm. Or we could point, follow like suspicious people. It's like late afternoon at this point, by the way. All right. Um, well, let's go back outside for now. Um, are the suspicious people still within sight? Uh, you don't see them, no. Okay. Uh, but as you exit the uh, the cantina, uh, you hear a pointed scream up ahead. And ah. they're in the shadowy alley next to the cantina. You see three figures beating up a fourth person. Oh my One of the oh, figures well, steps into the light, and you recognize the distinctive armor of a bounty hunter. He uh -oh. pulls his blaster and dresses the, the addresses the beaten person. You're gonna tell us what you want, what we want, or you're gonna end up dead. Um, you know, I'm kind of tired of bounty hunters already. 
<laughs> Everywhere so, you go, it's a bounty so hunter. They don't see that we're there, right? Uh, no, not yet. Can uh, can we kind of just like walk over to the alley, and before they see us, can I just like whip out my pistol and try to shoot the pistol out of the other guy's hand? Sure. Yeah. Too bad absolutely. you gave that blaster away. Well, I have another one. <laughs> that was the one I found. That was the you could have like do a wheel though. Mm. Well, now we're starting yeah. gunfights. <laughs> Apparently, here we go. We're not starting gunfights; we're ending gunfights. Yeah, yes, that is an excellent point. We are indeed. We're preventing them before they start. All right. So let's see. Oh, that's not good. Salarent shot first. Uh, so I got, uh, I got a one on my wild die. Oh, all right. Oh. In that case, I got an eight. Uh, yeah, you fire in. Uh... <sighs> yeah, that's not good. Uh, you fire and it totally misses uh, the person that you were aiming at. And now all of the bounty hunters look over in your direction and they immediately start to uh, reach for their weapons and... Uh, they drop the the guy that they were messing messing with, and now they their attention is directed to to you all. Roll perception, please. Oh boy! All right. Perception. Well, I mean, on the plus side, they stopped beating up the random person. Yeah. <laughs> so mission accomplished. For real. Uh, fourteen for Rakan. Uh, I got a ten. Okay. Um, nine. Also okay. nine. Okay, and Ben, what did you say you got? Fourteen. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, Ben, you get to actually go first. All right. Um, how many bounty hunters are there total again? There's three. Three? Uh... Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just pull, uh, just pull my blaster and shoot the lead one. Okay. Uh, four. Uh, fifteen. Uh, yeah, you uh, you hit the lead <laughs> one. Uh, he becomes uh, injured, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, he becomes wounded. Uh, where just, does where do you shoot him? You shoot him in like the shoulder. Yep. He just kind of kind of you know recoils back a little bit. Uh, next is uh, Salarant. All right, so I say that first one was a warning shot. Okay, <laughs> and then uh, I go and I uh, I try to shoot again, but I, I I specifically try to shoot just to injure, not to uh, not to like kill, just so that like just to like you know. Stop him from being able to uh, keep going. All right. Okay, that's much better. And that was an explosion. That's another explosion. What I like to hear. And then that's a one. That's not what I like to hear. All right. So, question. Yes. Uh, if it explodes and it hits a one, does that still count as a one, or is that just like a... It's not on your wild die, right? It is on the wild die. So the wild die... But, but the wild die is explosions. Only explodes. Uh, yeah, it still counts as a, as, a, as a one. It takes okay. out your lowest lowest die, or, or okay. we can give you some sort of complication, whatever okay. you want. that's fine. Uh, in that case, I got a 22. Okay, yeah, you uh, you definitely beat my... Uh, my Sixteen, uh, so yeah, he's definitely very injured, and uh, you hit him square in the chest, and he just kind of falls back into the into the wall and uh, of the alley, and uh, you can see him like kind of like almost like fall down a little bit, and uh, he's in rough shape. Uh, next up is Kresden. I. Regret everything oh, only, about this. Hungry says it's only on the first roll, so you would have uh, definitely added two more. So, or you definitely would have added that first one. So, 
or added that die, Brandon? What, what uh, would you it, have added? What, what would it? Uh, it would have then been a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> it's pretty much the same the same thing. Yeah. Then. Okay. Uh, Jason, or Crescent. Um, I am going to take out my tiny little holdout blaster and attempt to shoot the same fellow. Okay. Go for it. Uh, 14, 15, sorry. Uh, yeah, you totally just blast him and uh, it just decimates him. <laughs> You're going just, to incapacitate, not to kill. <laughs> I'm just looking at my blaster and looking at him and looking at my blaster and like, what? <laughs> what just happened here? You just get a, a small but approving nod from Rakan. <laughs> It'll work out just trouble. I'll just I'll I will I will shout at the down bounty hunter. I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> uh, Berka, you're up next. I want to go up and check on the person that they were beating the crap out of. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a male Devor Devorian. Oh, hello, friend. Good to see you. Are you conscious? Are you alive? Mm. Did I come rushing to the aid of another dead body? Yeah, this and, is going to get uh, really suspicious if this is another dead body. He goes, uh, 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 hey, no, I'm good. I'm. Well, you look less than good, but I'm glad you're conscious and alive. So let's let's get you uh, patched up here. Uh, thanks a lot. Do you have something to drink? I do, and he reaches into his his uh, <laughs> into his jacket and pulls out a flask and starts drinking. And, okay, uh, that's enough of that right now. That's that. No, we're gonna we're gonna put pause but on it, that. But we're it gonna... makes me feel better. I bet it does. But uh, makes me gonna, feel better. We're just gonna pause. Let me take a look at some of these contusions here. So at this point, uh, one of the, uh, the 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 final the third bounty hunter, bounty hunter number three, uh, <laughs> takes takes a uh, his blaster out and uh, fires up his jetpack and kind of floats there and takes a shot at uh, Kresden, who just took out his uh, his <laughs> bounty hunter mate. I guess is probably the best way to put it. Somehow I'm going to be the most like oddly reputable killer of bounty hunters ever. <laughs> Man, I can't roll for the life of me tonight. Uh, give me a, give me some sort of strength roll, uh, Jason. All righty. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, it fires at you and uh, it hits you, but you're you're kind of just stunned. It you like whatever you have, kind of just it. it it knocks you like, prone. Let's, let's, like let's just own, put it that way. My yeah. old data pad comes flying out because exactly. I've been using the data pad that I took from, from Dana. <laughs> it's got a great big charred hole in it. And uh, at this point, the uh, the uh, bounty hunter flies off on his on his uh, jet pack and uh, leaves the other one just kind of... I'm just smacking wounded. my chest, making sure there's no holes in me and trying to put out any <laughs> little scorch marks on my outfit. <laughs> uh, ben, what would, you, uh, what would you like to do? Or Rickon, I should say. They're just uh, the, the, they're turning tail and running, huh? Uh, one of them's gone. One of them t flew off on it with his jetpack, and then one of them's there, kind of injured. Is is the one with the jetpack still up in the air and within line of sight? Uh, I mean, it depends on what what do you got for a uh, weapon. I got a, a, a DH seventeen, not super long range, but not the not the lightest of blaster. I mean, we could, we you could give it a shot if you really wanted to. Yeah, let's let's try to try to wing that jetpack. Okay. As we, as we go through here. Use the force, recon. Um yeah, we're gonna we're gonna blow that force point actually. Double these dice. Nice. Uh, oh my god, we're exploding. It's crazy. Ah! Um, okay, hold on. Ten twenty-two. 31, uh, 37, 39 after. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. You totally just, uh, you, you fire <laughs> oh. up and, and, and you get this, you look at and, and you aim it just precisely and it hits square on the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the jet pack and the jet pack just explodes and you see this guy kind of 
doing this uh, death spiral spin and you see him fly off out of out of sight and you know that you know at the velocity and at the and as much as he was out of control he's going not going to survive wherever he he, he ends up I'm like completely deflated after my sad little shot that that took the other guy down, <laughs> having seen what he's just done with his. <laughs> I'm just like, mm. <laughs> Salarant, uh, it's your your turn to uh, to go. You've got an injured uh, bounty hunter that I think you winged, uh, you know, uh, the last round. Yeah, so I, I go up to the injured bounty hunter. Is it, well, is he still like up, or is he just like, or is he obviously like? He's kind of, around? he's kind of down. He's kind of like propping himself up against the the wall of the 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 uh, alley, and you can see him like reaching for his blaster to kind of, kind right. of, you know. So I I go, I go up to him. I just kind of kick the blaster out of his hand, and I'm just like, "Who are you? Who sent you? Why are you here?" And, in that uh, order, he he looks at you and he says, uh, "You know why I'm here. You know why we're all here. I think, and uh, I'm not telling you anything." Uh, well, I don't think we'll get any information out of this guy. So, uh... <laughs> kind of sounds that way. Maybe we should medic him to death, Bricka. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if. If I tell no. you why I'm, if I tell you anything, he's going to he's going to kill me, and I don't. E? Elaborate. It's either us or him. I'm sorry, I didn't catch his name. You said. I'm not. No, I. You know. So you'd can. rather die in an alleyway. Now. I'd like to take my chances with you, and he like reaches for his blaster, or no, he, he kind of uh, you know you already picked up his he already I kicked he already it away from him. His way. Uh, he like reaches down and takes a knife out of his uh, out of his pocket, and uh, says, "I'd rather take my chances with you than with him." And like he tries to like push himself up off you know off the the wall of the the alley, and he's just kind of standing there with a knife. I'm gonna just punch him. Okay. I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna go <laughs> ping, right in the give nose. Me, give me a melee. Uh... Okay. That's dexterity. Okay. Oops, wrong way uh, Seventeen. Yeah, you uh, you punch him in the face, and it. Uh, he just kind of uh, doesn't react at all, and he looks down. He looks at you and says, "That's all you got." And he takes out uh -oh. a uh, oh jeez, a second knife. Take, takes out uh, a, a a thermal detonator in his in his oh, other in his other okay. hand. Ah, this oh. is uh, uh, we can we can play this the easy way or the hard way. Which which way you want to play this now? And I just pull out the other grenade that I got from the other bounty hunter, and I just say, oh, "I'm going to play great. it the hard way." <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this is not going to end well. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Berka, what, what would you like to do while all the like all the guys are are kind of just uh, showing up, uh, trying to? Uh, We're measuring things. Yeah. Apparently, I would like to uh, to lift up my my beaten and inebriated friend and, and kind of start scooting away from this situation with him. <laughs> like, hey, let's go over here. Yeah, around the corner of this building. This this way. No. This way. Let's let's get it. Let's get out. <gasps> All right. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, shh. We're gonna walk quietly. <laughs> we're gonna walk quietly over here this way. Yes. Quiet, quietly. Yes. Real quiet, not shh, drunk shh, quiet. Shh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's Quietly. go. Let's go. Yep, yep, let's go. I'm not uh, I'm not drawing from personal inspiration at all. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh yeah, you uh, you kind of lead him uh off of the uh 
Yeah, we're gonna go like around up, right? the corner of the building because I okay. I don't want to die. Oh, no. So at this point, the uh, the bounty hunter's holding a thermal detonator, and he's just kind of kind of doing the little like where he's like holding it out and kind of like <laughs> don't make me do it. <laughs> kind of you know, kind of making sure that uh, hey, I'm Has gonna activate it. Yet? I'll flick it. I'll flick it. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, and he's he's trying to like walk away. He's trying to like position himself so he can walk away. Okay, Rigon, try him for a trick shot. <laughs> you realize you're holding the, the trigger on the detonator wrong, right? And at that point he, he takes a second and he like take he looks at it. And shoot him right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Go for it. Uh that is gonna be twelve fourteen. Uh, yeah, you you totally just blast him right in the face, and he just falls back and drops the thermal detonator, uh, and and he, it just goes rolling on the ground. That's that's a total classic George Lucas uh, episode one through three uh, moment. situation too. Yeah, moment. Yep. <laughs> I was, I'm just like, man, I wanted to take care of this one. I had a whole edgy story and like a bunch of lines. <laughs> well, now you have a thermal detonator to add to your grenade salary, mm -hmm. so there you go. Well, <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, hey, where'd Burka go? Looking around. I'm right over here. I was just getting out of blast range. I were you, though? <laughs> the guy you were looking for. It's fine. It was never going to go off. This uh, one isn't even primed. <laughs> okay. Like, like I, We would have any idea. A medic and a former... <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, uh, how? What kind of shape is this guy in? Is he actually like uh, he's, he beat up or he, just like mildly beat up? Mildly beat up. I mean, okay. he's so drunk that it probably doesn't really matter how much he's beat up. I mean, he probably feels you're gonna feel it. pretty lousy in the morning, but you're yeah, okay oh yeah, right he's now. definitely. But he's coherent. He can kind of tell you stuff a little bit. Uh, he's, right. I mean, he's not totally, you know, Gonzo, but uh, you know, you could probably ask him a few questions if you wanted to. That's great. We would love to do that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. 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 So we're looking for somebody. Uh, well, you've come to Labria. Labria will tell you I uh, know everyone. So, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. What do you. Uh, that would be great. Uh, just, somebody... uh, can we get somewhere where there's not so much sun, where there's so much light? Uh, it's kind of hard in my. Kind of hurting my eyes. I, I take off my hat and I just kind of <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. Personal you want a drink? Shade. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I give him the description that we have um, on the time frame for this person. I'm, I'll see if that rings any mm. bells before I give uh, the actual name. No, I don't. Uh, I don't know that person, but. Uh, what there, does... There's somebody that I know that might know that person. They're oh, yeah. uh, slag flats. She knows. She knows everybody. She slag... she she will slag flats. Slag flats. Okay. Yeah. And who's this person who could help us? What's her name? Slag flats. That that's her name. Yes. That's oh, what I that said. I thought that, that was like the a place. place. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's oh, unfortunate okay. for that person. <laughs> you need to name. stop drinking so much. Okay, sure. Where can I find Slag Flats? Uh, she doesn't... Uh, you don't find Slag. Slag finds you. Oh, Lord. And she I, only I deals with, with people... Criminal stuff. She only deals with people who she wants to deal with. So, you know, maybe I could take you there, and maybe I could sweet talk her, and maybe you know. Oh yes, that sounds great. But again, my, uh, my NPC voice is uh, my Star Wars NPC <laughs> voice is coming out again. Um, if you could but, arrange uh, an introduction, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Um, I'm not in really any shape to meet Slag right now. If you look at, uh, I mean, look at me. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. How about how about we go in the morning? I I'll meet you. I'll meet you. Don't know the... as you're going to be doing any better in the morning, but sure. Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, you hook him up with like an IV of some fluids. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you have somewhere to crash? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Do you have any place to? I'm going to tell you. Let's. 
Let's meet at the Space Sharp Hotel in the morning. Okay. And then I'll take you to go see to, to go see Slag Flats. Okay. Does that sound good to everybody? I mean, it's a lead. We need those. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Try not to die between now and then. Uh, so yeah, so then he uh, he just kind of uh, stumbles uh, down the street a little bit and uh, kind of uh, realizes he kind of like takes a second, looks around and uh, looks like uh, he realizes that he walked past the cantina and uh, turns around <laughs> and stumbles back into the uh, the cantina. Uh, uh, some people. Well, so, yeah, he mentioned a hotel, so uh, I guess it's, we're still in in the city. Uh, Can't we just not crash to... back on our ship? <laughs> We've got bunks there. We don't have to pay for them. We're already paying to dock the ship. You're right. It's true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. I've got 100 credits left to my name. I'm thinking of these things. <laughs> We also have some here, there, so that'll probably work out better for Right. Me. Yeah. All right. We will go spend the night on the ship. All right. Yeah, you spend the night on the ship. It's pretty uneventful. Uh, the, the next morning comes up, and uh, both suns rise in the east, and it's a new day. I will put on a different outfit, meant for Tatooine, I suppose. Since I, oh. Apparently, in my inventory, I have... Uh, <laughs> Literally, the major thing in my inventory is several changes of clothing for just about any occasion. <laughs> That's handy. Yeah. So I will have a nice, flowy, Tatooine outfit. All right. And then we will go in search of this fellow. You gotta again. go meet this guy. We have to meet him at the hotel. The hotel. Right? Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, more so. Uh, you, you get to the uh, hotel. Uh, are you bringing your? Are you bring your uh, skiff with you? That's the only way we have a transport. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to the hotel, and there's a Devronian uh, on a uh, old, rusty, uh, beat-up speeder bike. And, uh, yeah, he looks totally fine. And he's like, hey, guys. I'm glad you could make it. Uh, let's, uh, let's go meet uh, Slag. All right. Yeah. How are you feeling this morning? I'm I'm fine. Why why would uh Ah the swelling on your face has gone down remarkably. Yeah, you know, I kinda put some ice on it last night and good. I'm good. Okay. Good. Yeah. So uh we're gonna go to uh to Tower Ridge and uh just follow me, I'll take you I'll take you there. All right. And so he jumps on his speeder bike and drives off on the uh yeah, he goes. Uh, try, takes you to a Tower Ridge, and it's the first subspace uh, subspace transmission antenna ever constructed on Tatooine, uh, and uh, it's now unused and just towering in ruin. And below it rests one of the plant's first water storage silos, set up on a sandy ridge, and it overlook, overlooks the encroaching, encroaching desert. Uh, yeah, while while you're writing out, Labry explains that Slag Flats is an I Thorian in exile, an ancient female hammerhead who came to this dead world on Mos Eisley uh, on a colony ship. Uh, she has carved a place for herself in the underworld, but not large enough, uh, not a large enough place to upset Jabba. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and so uh, she, he he stops right before the uh, right before the, uh, the the tower right there and says. Uh, yeah, Slag. She can tell you where to find uh, where to find uh, you know this person, this talent person that uh, you're looking for. Uh, uh, she she holds audience in the silo. Uh, yeah, and oh, uh, this okay. is this is as far I already told her you were coming. This oh. is as far as I go. I you'll be fine. I will see you uh, see you later. Maybe we can get a drink at the cantina after, and uh, you know you know where to find me. That's where. You know, and uh, at that point he, uh, he zooms back towards Mos Eisley on his speeder bike. All right then. All right. So before we go yeah, in, right. I kind of just like, uh, do you guys think that maybe this was a little too easy 
that we kind of just found this guy and he's like, oh, this person knows who this per- where this person is. Anyone think that's kind of suspicious? Well, I don't think that going in cautiously is a bad idea. But also, what 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 else are we gonna do? What other options do we have? I mean, I feel like it could be a trap. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, if it's, it's not entire- a trap, it's definitely not intended to come out in our favor. That's for sure. I mean, we can always just spring the trap. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if we go into it knowing it's a trap, it's not really a trap, really. I mean, we're we're walking in aware. <clears throat> and we do have a thermal detonator and a grenade now. So, so are are you just going to like kind of look around? Yeah, we'll do a little little survey of the outer area. Uh, yeah. The ru- the rusted ruins of the transmission tower cast a, sh- a shadow uh, across the ridge complex. The silo itself rests atop a square metal building with double doors set in one side. One door rocks open in the evening breeze. An old speeder is, sparked, is parked behind the silo, and a control box is attached to a sidewall. Uh, let's investigate that control box. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it just looks like a you know, control box. What does it control? Can I tell? Can't tell. Stuff. Can push I open it? Push the button. Don't mm. push buttons. It's a bad idea. Give me, give me some sort of. Uh, do you have some sort of uh, skill that can let you deci- uh, decipher the? I have, the uh, I have um, computer program and repair. Okay, yeah, use that, I guess. So we'll do technical then. Yeah. If you want to be technical. Uh, fourteen. Yeah, you can't quite tell that uh, what it controls. Mm. Does look a little newer than the rest of the, the 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 building itself is an old building, but this looks a little bit newer than than the the rest of the building. Uh, like maybe it was put like okay. it was put on in addition or something. Add on yeah. later. All right. Uh, as near as I can tell, it's purely decorative. Moving on. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to tell them. All right. <laughs> if I can't figure out what it is, it's just a decoration. <laughs> what else is everybody doing? Okay, well, I mean, I guess uh, might as well go in. Mm. But uh, I, I, I give uh, Burke a grenade just in case, and I'm just like, okay, well, so you pull, you you pull the pin, you, you pull, you pull the pin, and then you throw it, and then you run. Ah. Uh, the oh. grenade goes towards the bad guy. Okay. Just in case. This entire side, this whole circular thing towards enemies. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you uh, you go in. The dark interior of the silo is quiet, quiet and still. Uh, your footsteps echo la- loudly about the metal chamber. Then you notice shapes upon the floor. Besides some overturned furniture, three humans and a hulking towels are uh, scattered uh, nearby. Distinct blaster burns riddle their bodies. An Ithorium, uh, an Ithorian, a presumably slag flats, is slumped in her chair, her great hammer-shaped head splayed across her desk. Why is everyone dead when we get here? Ah. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't don't need this. Do you want it back? It makes me nervous. Um uh, sure. Does this does sure. this look like it happened oh, recently? Yes, that's a good question. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it does look recently. Uh, does any? I mean, you could probably take a look. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. go inspect. Okay. Inspect. Uh, yeah, can you give me a perception roll? Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, that's garbage. Six. Um, it's fairly easy. You can kind of see that. Uh, that uh, that they're that they're dead, uh, they're very dead. Um, <laughs> Look, dead people. They're mm. kind of they're kind of right dead. Up. Yep, um, yep, yep. Uh, you do a notice a whole bunch that, of case of no longer alive going on here. You do notice that there is a dart in the uh, neck of the uh, 
Pythorian. I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking and the it, dart. And it looks exactly like the one you've seen previously. Somebody is one step ahead of us. Ahead of us. Yeah, that, that's a worrisome, mm. yes. So now, we're, instead of, we don't, you know, we don't even really need the location of Adar Talon now. We just need the location of these damn bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Across the, uh, uh, on the table that the Ithorian's head is at, is also a data pad that uh, is sitting there oh. next to her. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go get that. Mm -hmm. Um, Against my better judgment, I'm just going to pick it up because <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a henchman dude. <laughs> uh, you, you uh, pick it up in, uh, in on the 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 screen of the of the data pad, all it says is Arno's next. Oh jeez! No. All right. Uh, well, what do we want to do with that? It says Arno's next. Arno's says, next. Arno's yeah. next. Arno was the contact from the person that we bought the speeder from, right? Yeah, the scout. Yeah. Yeah. What's the thing? She said that they just sent a transmission and he was out scouting. Yeah. yeah. Any we way to trace that transmission? Um, no, it looks like that there's pretty much everything is... Uh, the the data pad itself is is uh, pretty much unusable, other than the fact that it just has those those uh, words has typed on the, on the screen. Unusable yeah. because it's been damaged, or unusable because it's encrypted. Uh, it's because it's been damaged. Oh. All right. Uh, okay. So going back outside really quickly, are there any tracks uh, leading away from? You? As, oh, never mind. As, as you go to uh, <laughs> as you go to uh, exit the silo, the uh, doors magneti magnetize and seal, and uh, all of a sudden, the water from the silo starts filling the chamber. What? Hey, what? Oh, no. we got you covered, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are not okay with this. <laughs> We're all drowning, and he's like backstroking around the room. Like, Yay. <laughs> it's like uh, I never expected this. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is a discussion for after we get out of this. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I will look for a way to turn off the water. Yeah, are there any? Con is are there any visible controls? Maybe. You know, there was a control box control outside, box outside that was uh, <laughs> very, uh, looks like it was just put in fairly recently. I couldn't figure out how to use it, though. Darn it, Crescent, you said it was decorative. It is decorative, and I'm going to the grave with that, and so are you all. <laughs> Wait, can Mon Cal breathe underwater? They, they can. Yeah, yeah, they can. You're not even, oh, oh. <laughs> so I mean, you, you know live out here now, but... <laughs> So you know this door is reinforced uh, from any kind of blaster fire? Um, yeah, the only visible uh window is at the top, so we just oh, have to wait for it to fill up. Can, can you guys swim? Uh, no, uh, well, that option's out. I, <laughs> you I can't mean... swim, no, Erica can't I, swim, I no, uh, I can apparently. Haha. <laughs> Uh, does anybody have armor on to, to right now? No. Armor? What's that? Armor? Do you have any I have armor? data pads. Conveniently placed data pads. <laughs> How about Re Rickon? Do, Rick do you have any armor? No? no armor. Does nobody have any armor? Really? I, really no. I have, like, I have like a suit on because like uh, I'm a pilot, but like... But no, yeah, nothing. Like, I'm wearing like a civilian going pose going right now. Wow. Okay. Hey, do you, you still have that, do you still have that grenade? Could we blow the door open? Or blow uh, a hole in the wall or it's something. Not a bad idea. You could definitely not try. This is a rusted old piece of junk. That's so right. Just put it on the wall. Do Don't even put damage. it on the door. Just put it on the can, wall. Can we try to yeah. see which like is possibly like the weakest spot, like where it's most rusted? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I'll say that one of the one of the walls is kind of doesn't look as and maybe has like a you know a thin crack in the. Right. It's not, you know, it doesn't really impede the structure of it, but, uh, or, but uh, you know, it might it might have some sort of give more than the other sides. 
I, t- I take my time uh, swimming around, inspecting the walls. You know, just uh, it, it's been really. Uh, I've been really uncomfortable because it's super hot, and I'm just like <laughs> enjoying please. the water. Quickly, all right. please. We're all drowning, and he's just like, "Give I'm me getting, a minute." I'm getting damp, and I'm getting nervous. So I go over to that wall, and I, uh, I, I pull the, the the pin out of the grenade, and I kind of just like swim away as fast to the other side of the container as fast as I can. Okay. And I hope it goes off. Uh, yeah, it would uh, give me a roll for that. Uh, what is grenade is under? Just it's, grenade. It's a five D. Oh yeah, the damage from the grenade. Yeah. Yeah. Does that get a wild die or just uh? Uh yeah, we'll give it a wild die. That's fine. All right. Okay, so that is uh. 18. Uh, yeah, you blow a hole right in the side of the wall. And, uh, are, are you guys taking, slide. Are you taking any cover at all? From, is, from was, well, was, yes. was the detonator placed above or below the water line? I don't know. You tell me. Solorant, was it above or below uh, the water line? I'd say it was below the, uh, the water line. That way uh-huh. we can just like slide out the water. Then I'm gonna try to get as much of my body above the water line as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have no idea, so I wouldn't have the faintest. I I wouldn't even know to do that. Gonna hide so. behind a desk. I'm just something. paddling around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you you uh, you blow a hole in it. All the water starts, flo- you know, surging out of this hole that uh, that uh, you blew into it. And, I'm just going. Uh, Woo! Best day ever as I'm sliding out of the room with water. <laughs> Get so, me out of here. Every, everybody else following uh, Salarine? Oh, yes. yes. I would like yes. to very out, much not be bad anymore. Out, even even Rickan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Too. Yeah. You... Uh, you you get outside and uh, there's water coming out of the the silo and and uh, you can see that there were some sort of uh, speeder bikes that are way 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 off in the distance and they've just sped up and and uh, they've taken off and you can kind uh-huh. of faintly you can kind of faintly hear them but uh, and it's uh, they're now way, we have a direction way far away well we must pursue yeah. everybody. To the Bantha two. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get to the uh, to your uh, your uh, what is it? Your skiff, and uh, you start it up. And uh, by the time you get up to the uh, where the ridge or where the the speeder bikes were, you have no idea where they went off to. And they're gone. We can't really track them because they're speeder bikes and they're on repulsors. Right. <laughs> right. But we need to find based... some way to warn Arno that these people are coming for him. We have to go back to uh Juanita and let her know to get yeah, up at the we that... could yeah, we could go back to Juanita really quickly because if she got a message to him in the first place, she could at yeah. least say, you know, hide or whatever. Right. And then she's more inclined to give us his location then right. because we're going to help her help him. Yes. Yes, that's the plan. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, so you're going to go back to Mos Eisley and talk to yes. Winslow? Since that Winslow. is the plan. Uh, yeah, she uh, she greets you and she's like, ah, oh, my friends, how's that speeder? Is it, uh, is it working out okay? It's very speedery. Excellent. Great, but we have Excellent. more pressing issues. Uh, oh, you know what? I have a no, pressing no. issue for you. What? Old Arno wants to, uh, wants to meet with you tonight at the cantina. Where is Arno? Is he back I here now? I, he just said he wanted. To, he just sent me a message last night that said he wanted to meet you at the cantina tonight. You need to get another message to him right away and tell him he's in danger. Okay. Well, it's only a few hours away from. No, you need to message to... him right now and let him know he's in danger. Everyone, this is. Do you not see this planet? Everyone is in danger here. <laughs> show her the uh, the data pad. So you show her, um, you show her the data pad, the data pad, and she goes, <coughs> "Okay." This uh, data pad was found next to a dead person, by the way. Oh my gosh, who who died? Hope it's not one of my customers. 
Is it anybody I know? Probably one of your best customers. Oh no! You said you know everyone, so. Who, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, you who did, did you say that. Who did you? Who did you see? Who did you find? Did you kill them? No, goodness, no. no. They were dead when we got there. It's, uh, was it Slag Flats? <gasps> Slag Flats, yes. Yeah. Slag Flats is one of the original. One one of the first few people to settle here. She's dead. Mm, very yeah. much so. Same as Arno. According one to one of the first few people that settled here. Yeah, I think you need to contact Arno immediately. Mm-hmm. All right, I I will. Uh, yeah, I, I I I'll try to send him a message before, but uh, he he definitely wanted to meet you at the cantina tonight. Well, until we'll, then, he needs to stay low. <laughs> right, we'll still try to meet him, but he needs to be on the lookout because uh, there's a target on him, apparently. Also, does anyone know that he wanted to meet us at the cantina? Because uh, if so, we might want to rearrange that meeting to someplace mm. else. I, I wouldn't think that anybody else. See, I mean, he doesn't go around talking to. I mean, he's a scout. He, you know, he's not going to tell everybody what, what his business is. You know, uh, just in case, though, maybe we should. Uh... I don't know, maybe meet here. I don't think they'd expect that. Uh, no, anyone be uh, out in the open here? That. Out in the open? Come on. Look at this place. You really want to do well, your kind of this kind of business out in the open? What if we meet here and get on... To... We meet here, we get on the speeder, and we just take off and have the meeting on the move. We have a, you, you did sell us a pretty roomy speeder. Yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, great skiff, yeah. I know. I, nothing but quality uh, air and land speeders here. Okay, so that's the plan. We tell him to meet us here. We get on the speeder. We bugger off. We have our meeting. Because he uh, needs to change his plans. Is basically what ha needs to happen. If he's doing anything on a schedule, he's likely going to die on that schedule before he gets anywhere near us. Because somebody knows where people are. Somebody's finding it out, and they're one step ahead of us right now, and we need to catch up. We keep right. finding dead people, which is not what we want. That's suboptimal. That's not good, yeah. No, I dead, don't... Uh, dead people can't tell us much of anything. You know what happens? Eventually, you become the dead people. Yes. That, too. Sooner or later, yes, but not now. <laughs> I mean, that did happen to some people that met us. But Yes, we are, we are becoming proficient in making dead people, despite Burka. Hmm. Whose yeah. job is to? I mean, I guess people. I guess you could. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll send him a message. I don't know how long it will take to get him get to him because you know. Well, if he was going to meet us at the cantina tonight, he can't be that far away, right? Well, you would think, but you know, he's a very busy scout. <laughs> All right, send the message quickly. All right. So she goes uh, goes into her office and kind of uh, sends, and she goes. And you can see, see hear her uh, arguing with the boss, and saying, "I, I know, I, I know, it's not my break, but uh, this is very urgent. And <laughs> I, I need to take five minutes out and just just send an email. I, I know I'm, it's just, I, I, I know I've got sales quotas to, to but yeah, I, uh, all right, all right." And she goes, and she like opens the door. And says, just one one minute, I, I'll send a message. And she closes it, and and then she comes back out. And, okay, yeah, it's sent. Good. All right, so um, I guess we will just wait here. We'll keep. I'll keep an eye outside. I guess in case. Okay. You know, we see if we see anything suspicious looking, a group of people like the bar people, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, you uh, you wait a few moments. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, she gets a notification that says uh, Old Arnold. Says, uh, meet, meet me at the cantina at in in two <laughs> hours. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be right there. I'll be okay. 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 I'm. I'm. I'm uh, you know, that's what he's, he says. He says that he's okay. He's okay. <clears throat> old Arnold's. Arnold. Old Arnold's a tough guy. He knows what he's doing. <sighs> I, don't know. I mean, if this is what we got to do, this is what we got to do. I mean, there's at this point we can't change it. There's like I mean, we we'll just have to go to the cantina and set up as best we can. And... Right. I guess that's what we're doing. 
Just try to not be unalived. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so you go back to the cantina, and uh, it's you know basically the uh, the usual setting that uh, the cantina is. Uh, as soon as you walk in, though, uh, Labria kind of looks up and is like, oh, my friends! Oh, I'm truly sorry about what happened to old poor Slag. Uh, but I've... Hey, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. I found what? old Arno. He's going to be here in a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. He was Hopefully. still alive when you saw him? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I sent him a message. Oh, okay. Hopefully, uh, he's in better condition than Slag. Uh, quick, quick sidebar. How does he know that Slag is dead? He didn't go inside. <laughs> he just dropped us off. That's a little suspicious, no? A little bit. Yeah. Just a little. He might know something. Or he's the one who told them where to find Slag in the first place. Because he did drive us to a trap. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know what we do with this information. I'm just... It's <laughs> really all my superstitious spells. Mind, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, now I follow. Like, do not trust anything that the, the that this man says. To you. Trust no one. Trust nothing. Yes. Mm. Is that is that something you learned in spy school, Bricka? Do I have anything? I told you I failed out of spy school. Yeah, but you might have learned a thing or two. So at this no, point, I learned uh, absolutely nothing. At, at this at this point, a uh, few uh, folks walk into the bar that uh, definitely look like they don't, uh, or the cantina that. You saw the other day that kind of came in and asked for questions and uh, asked okay. the locals for questions. And uh, upon seeing them, uh, Labria stands up and points his fingers at you and says, uh, these these are the hunters that uh, the Slag wanted you to meet. Attack them! Attack them! Oh, my gosh. And, uh, uh, worst. Yeah, but... and, uh, <sighs> if we die point... here, I still want credit for figuring this out. <laughs> at, this, at this point... Uh, Eight or no, I'm sorry. Six bounty hunters take out their blasters, and you can hear the you can hear the bartender goes, "No blasters, no blasters in here." I and don't think uh, that's going to stop them. The, one of the main uh, bounty hunters stands up and stands in front of you and and holds out his blasters and says, "Money is tight, my friends, and competition is bad for business. You understand? Yes. Don't be mad with puggles. This is just business. And in that in that case, we're all going to roll perception." No. Oh, okay. Lord. Yeah, but I'm gonna just say one thing, and I'm just gonna be like, um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know uh, who might have told this, but we're we're not bounty hunters. We're we're not your competition. Yeah. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, eleven. Okay. I have nine. Okay. Twenty-three. Okay. Burka's going sometime three days ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, Burka, you get the uh, you get uh, the, the you get to go right uh, before everybody else. So I'll get, let you uh, I'll let you go. I want to dive behind the bar. Oh, damn okay. it! That was what I was gonna do. <laughs> I'm faster than you, and I'm diving behind the bar. Yeah, you uh, you dive behind the bar, and and uh, yeah, the bartender kind of looks up, to, looks at you, and uh, kind of shakes his head, and kind of. How ducks do I down get out of here? You have to have some kind of secret way out of here. This place is full of criminals all the time. How do you get out of here? Um, the the, the bartender just uh, just points to the front exit. Oh, this is the worst. Worst bar ever. Uh, all right, uh, Kresden, you get to go next. Um, seeing that Burka has stolen my idea, I'm going to kick over the table that we were sitting at and hunker down behind that. Okay. Uh, can I take a shot sure. at the same time? Uh, I, I yeah, we'll let you. We'll we'll let you do that. All in one action. I don't want to take a shot. Oh, 
I don't think this is the right move with this many bad guys. It's a lot of bad guys. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna t I'm gonna take uh, Salarant's tack here. I'm gonna kick the table over. Uh, I'm just gonna like you know kind of peek up around the around the top of it and be like, we're not bounty hunters. We are not your competition. We're here for a completely different reason. You can have all of the bounties. Um, yeah, no, he doesn't, uh... <laughs> pew, 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 pew! Puggles does okay. not believe you. <laughs> that's his answer. Uh, that's my action, though. I'm not gonna shoot. Uh, Brendan, you're, you're, uh, Salarant's next. Alright, so, uh... Uh, what was the guy's name that, uh, that we met in there? Uh, Labria or Puggles? Labria. Oh, yeah, Labria. Yeah, Labria, yeah. So, uh, since he's right there, so I'm gonna kind of just, like almost put him in like a like a like hold him in front of me yep and like and be like so you're not gonna shoot this guy this guy uh he gave <laughs> uh, you the information that you got, that you needed you're gonna keep him alive i'm sure you <laughs> don't want anything bad to happen to him <laughs> we don't care about uh, that guy the Dev devonian we don't care about the locals here we're just here for bounties we're we're here on a special mission from the Empire. I'm assuming uh, the special mission isn't friendship with the uh, locals. <laughs> that doesn't get us paid. Uh, so yeah, at this point, uh, the the uh, Puggles, the the main uh, the main guy that uh, kind of uh, confronted you. Uh, decides to take out his blaster and uh, he's going to uh, shoot the uh, De Labria in the in the uh, chest. Oh boy! Let me see here. There we go. Forty. Let me see what we got here. Uh, that is a six, ten, fifteen. Yeah, he just shoots uh, Labria right in the chest. Ah! And uh, this is that. I don't care about that guy. Uh I, I guess he means business. I guess so. Uh, Rican, it's your turn. So uh, your bounty is for uh, who again? It's none of your business. Well, how can we know that we are competition? Our bounty is obviously for for a, a big dark lighter. That's uh doesn't matter if there's any bounties. We're we're here for them. We, so, so, you're, you're so preventing you know, us from getting them. Hey, so you know. And he looks over at uh, one of his other guys and uh, tries to uh, take kind of like motions to aim his blaster and at, at you. So, what you're saying is you're under orders from the the Grand Moth of the area to collect all the bounties. Doesn't matter who are whose orders we are under. This well, you, is you said you were working for the Empire, right? That is true. I'll open up my jacket lapel, and there's a uh, captain's insignia rank badge on the inside of it, and I'll just close it. Hmm. Interesting. Why are you hanging out with? This crowd making sure jobs get done, which you are not doing yours currently. I suggest you leave. Hmm. He's not. He's not quite sure. Uh, he's not quite sure how to take this. Did you have an associate that wore a jetpack? That yes. maybe you haven't heard of in a few hours. No, we haven't seen him since yesterday. Mm-hmm. They pulled guns on us. We ended that immediately. His contract was terminated. I suggest you get back to collecting your bounty. You see, I'm conflicted here. But you're not, if we're not dead. If we're not following. I, I know that you're. 
we're on strict orders from someone to uh, make sure to take out all the competition in this area. Right, and we've and, said we're not competition, and yet you're trying to take us out. So do your job. And at this point, uh, he gets some sort of uh, transmission in his in his ear. And uh, you look at the entrance of the uh, the cantina, and standing there is a Mandalorian in full uh, armor, and he's got uh, uh, a dart gun, a dart, uh, and he's going to shoot at uh, Salarant. And uh, uh -oh. oh no, no! Uh, Salarant, give give me some, give me a uh, a strength roll. Can, can I attempt to dodge it first? Uh, yeah, you can attempt to dodge it if you want. If that's if that's easier. Uh, yeah, why don't you attempt to dodge it? I got a thirteen. Yeah, no, it uh, it hits you uh, square in the uh, the neck, and oh. uh, at this point, uh, the Mandalorian uh, looks at uh, Puggles and and kind of notions to uh, take care of you guys, and then. He leaves the cantina entrance, and Puggle <laughs> says, "I knew something wasn't right," and uh, he proceeds to uh, shoot shoot uh, uh, his blaster. Ah. Then, uh, our, uh, Rakan, what, what do you what do you what would you like to do to uh, would you like to do anything in order to uh, prevent you from getting hit by a blaster? Yeah, I'd like to shoot the one that's about to shoot me. Okay. <laughs> shoot first. Shoot first. Uh, let's see. Uh, 23? Oh, yeah. You definitely beat him. Uh, you both do a quick draw. Uh, you blast away, and he goes flying into the booth and uh, sprawls out on the table in, back of, uh, in the booth in back of him. Uh, he's not dead, though. He's just injured. Oh, another fine mess. The, the other the other bounty hunter is going to... Uh, uh, he looks at uh, Salarant, who just got the uh, the dart in his neck, and uh, looks at Rakan and uh, decides to uh, fire at uh, Rakan. Picked excellent cover, Bricka. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he to totally misses. that. Uh, you don't even have to roll for that, uh, Ben, because that was such a horrible roll. Uh, that was a five, so uh, he totally, totally misses. And uh, yeah, now it's the uh, top of the order. Burka, it's your turn. Oh, I need to uh, administer some sort of aid to Sal Sal because he's got a dart in his neck, and I'm afraid he's gonna die. Sal, all your all your actions this round are going to be minus one die. By the way. All right, so I would like to get myself over to Salarant and try to uh, pull the dart out and start treating him. Okay. Um, yeah, you can. You're trying to like dodge between all the the yeah, fire yes. fire and weave uh, my way over. Yeah, you pull the dart out of his neck, and that's about as far as you can go. It'll stop the uh, any more poison from getting into his uh, system, but uh, that's about all you can do at this point uh, in all this right. round. I will uh, tell him, don't do anything crazy. You need to get looked at. Cresden, uh, Chris, what what are you doing? Uh, when I see Burka leap over the bar to go to Salarant's aid, I'm going to shout, thanks, Burka, and dive over the bar. <laughs> 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 You're and the worst. I'm, I'm not going to hide, though. I'm just going to dive over the bar, uh, turn and snap a shot off at, uh, at the bounty hunter that uh, uh, they're the next bounty hunter in line. Behind the first fellow that Rickon just dropped. Okay. Oh, ugh. um, twelve. <laughs> no, that's okay. We only have. Uh... Wow, I'm really not rolling well tonight. Uh, that is a ten. So yeah, you hit him and uh, he gets injured. Okay. He's, he's uh... just kind of he recoils and he maybe hit him hit him in the leg. Let's, let's, okay. Let's do that. Uh, Bren, uh, Salarant, it's your turn. All right, so I'm going to attempt to. Uh, you, you're feeling very woozy. You're starting yeah. to, uh, you know. 
not I'm not I'm not I'm not feeling uh top of my game. So I'm gonna just gonna stay crouched behind uh that is the table that I that I'm uh, in front of uh, that behind and I'm just kinda gonna kinda just like wave my kinda put my blaster above it and try to just make a shot at one of the six guys standing in front of me. Okay, yeah. I mean you're close enough. Uh, give me give me some sort of blaster right a blaster roll for that. All right, I got a nine. Uh, ten. Ten, sorry. You got a ten? ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, you don't uh, You don't hit anybody. You're just fi- firing wildly, and it's not hitting anyone. You might hit the, you know, a, a cantina, you know, patron. That's about it. Some guy just loses his hand. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rick Ann, it's your it's your turn. I'm just look at the remaining uh, hunters that are still standing up right now. Like, are we really doing this today? <laughs> Pug- Puggles looks at you and says, "There's no better day to do it." Hmm. Take a shot. Uh, we got eighteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, you totally hit uh, Puggles right in the uh, right in the shoulder, and it kind of sends him scrolling back. And uh, he's now. Uh, would you, Would you like to shoot again with a minus with a minus die uh, sure. negative? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, this one's going to be a nine. Uh, yeah, the second shot uh, doesn't uh, doesn't hit him at all. All right. Uh, one of the bounty hunters uh, kind of looks at what's going on here and doesn't really like what he sees and starts taking off towards the uh, the cantina entrance and uh, flees for uh, doesn't doesn't want to be doesn't doesn't want to be taken out by these by these and he's not real quite sure if the empire is involved because he's not quite. He saw that uh, what Recan had in his in his jacket and. He's kind of conflicted, so one of them one of them takes it off. Uh, Berka, what what are you doing? Administering first aid to Salarant so that this poison doesn't uh, continue to incapacitate him. Okay. I'm so gonna die because I'm just standing there with my plaster in front of the table. Not even looking for cover, he's just standing there. <laughs> I, I got a 15 to okay. do first aid. Yeah, you, it, it's not uh, not getting any worse, but it's not getting any better. So, Sally, you still just have a negative one for all your rolls uh, this 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 round, too. Do uh, I know what this poison is? Yeah, you do know what this poison is. Okay. Uh, Preston, it's your turn. Uh, I will continue shooting into the doorway. Okay. I mean, at the people, not at the people. Yeah, yeah. at the the doorway. Dang it! Oh, dear Lord. Um. Well, I mean, nine. Nine. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. uh, You don't really hit anybody. You're just still kind of just firing. You poking your head up, firing, and then coming down. You don't. Not not quite. Not taking enough time to really kind of. My my first shot that hit a guy, I was like, ha ha, pow. My second shot, I like, I put my arm up and shot without even. Thinking to ha- oh, I still need to look. Yeah. <laughs> would Would you like to make another sec a second shot with a minus die? It's not going to hurt anything, so I'll try. Okay. Thirteen. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, you actually hit somebody that time. <laughs> Rolled better with less dice. So uh, yeah, you uh, you definitely hit and uh, injure one of the uh, uh, one of the bounty hunters. So you've got uh, two bounty hunters and Puggle that are injured, and uh, one of them took off. And uh, another one's kind of standing there, looking, drawing his blaster at you, kind of looking at the door, kind of looking at you, trying to figure out what what's going on. And then, uh, Salarant, what are you doing? So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fire again, but uh, I'm gonna use a character point this time. But okay. I'm also gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, so uh, a P- Puggle is that like a family name or? That like, <laughs> it's a stupid just, name. Uh, that's what it is. Did, did you pick it up yourself or? Uh... Oh, that's bad. <laughs> uh, 
I got a I got I got a six because I got a one on my wild die. Ooh. Oh no, sorry, yeah. seven. Seven. Yeah, no, he uh he, he kind of takes offense to that comment and it kind of just makes him even more mad that not only did you try to fire at him and miss, but you also insulted his name. Um <laughs> that uh yeah, I might as well go because I have the. I also have the initiative, the same initiative as Ben. So uh, I'm going to uh, take a shot at uh, Salarant because uh, he does not like the fact that. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, man, I can't. I keep rolling ones for the life of me. Um, well, you know. So I I rolled a seven. So yeah, no, he doesn't. Uh, he just gets mad and and uh, fires away, and he's, his rage kind of gets to him and and doesn't. Uh, D- doesn't hit him. Uh, Rickan, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, let's let's try to send the message home on old Puggles here and uh, take a shot. Uh, 18 on that one. Uh, yeah, let me just roll one. Yeah, roll a one. Oh, yeah, you totally you totally double it. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, you totally blast him and it just sizzles right through his chest and it comes out the other side and he just drops back and his blaster falls out of his hands and uh, all the injured uh, bounty hunters that are there and the one that was just kind of eyeballing the door just takes off and the other ones kind of just wave and like ah. try to like stumble out of the, the cantina and they, 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 they try to make their way to the door. Cut the head off the snake. Are you... Uh... I will say... I think we're done here, and I'm gonna walk over to the bar and drop. Uh, eh, we'll drop twenty credits on the uh, on the bar top. All I right. will pop up from behind the bar and serve him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at this point, uh, you're standing there, and and from uh, in the, from out of the shadows. A, uh, a grizzled old timer steps out and he kind of looks around surveying the area and his face is all craggly and baked to brick red and uh, he has a long bristly beard and uh, which he scratches as he approaches and says in a slow draw someone sure doesn't like you folks good thing I just got back from the Dune Sea or I might have ended up like poor old slag. Mm-hmm. I'm oh, Arno. Do. I'm Arno, the scout. I got a message from Slags to look y'all up. You got a message from Slag to look us up. Yeah, Slag and I go way back. Hmm. We're one of the first people to settle here. I heard that a lot. How come, yeah, why are people killing all these first settlers, first people? Like, what's going hmm. on here? Figure, uh, figure Slag was killed because uh, someone thought they knew something about this Adar Talon fellow, mm. seeing as how, uh, seeing as how them and me are locals who d- date back that far. Seems to me there was a group of people who arrived right around this time that the, that this commander person's death. They settled out in the waste, actually purchasing uh, some desert homestead, some deserted homesteads. So that's where we'll start in the morning. We'll check out some of them places to see what we can see. Uh, there's Lanks Farm, Tuscan Fort, and Sedai's Fisk Desert Manor. Yep, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day. And that's... When it fades out, and that is the end of our uh, first episode, and uh, that's gonna do it for episode <laughs> one of uh, the ta- the Tatooine Manhunt. I want to thank uh, everyone for joining us. If you'd like to uh, check out episode two, we will be back next Wednesday at nine p.m. Eastern. And uh, I want to thank all the players. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Amanda, for. Uh, being a part of this session. Thank you to everybody that joined us in the chat. Uh, like I said, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. If you're a fan of uh, Star Wars, uh, please let us know in the comments uh, if uh, you enjoyed this actual play. And uh, we'll see you all next week for episode two.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you would be so kind, make sure you hit that like, uh, comment, and subscribe, all the YouTube jazz that we're supposed to do here. Uh, it really is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to support us more, uh, you can uh, check us out on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com backslash victory condition gaming. We have all sorts of Patreon perks, and it definitely helps support our show. Thank you so much.